what's up with you on the Legion? What up, this is Joyce Bell here on the Belgian the Bell Show. Make sure you check us out on the Woodward Sports Network. Glad you could join us all, all over the interwebs. My, I caught myself there with the what up, doe. What up, doe? <laughs> it sounds gonna so much better when you say it. You know, it we're going to get there, Sean. We're going to get there. What up, doe? You know what, though? I don't want you to change it, though, because... Like, I love the way you say it. Then I can come in behind you. You make me sound so much cooler. You sound so cooler. <laughs> you sound so cooler. Happy Friday. Uh, this, this is, uh, yeah, we're, we're all happy. It's Friday. Hope you are doing well. Hola to you, Rob. And happy Friday to all the Woodies out there. So glad you could join us. He's mm. Joy Bell. I'm Sean Belegian. Mm. Uh, we got a lot of crap to get to today, Joy. A really lot of do. crap. Yeah, it just it's, wait. It's, not, it's a lot of good stuff. Uh, can I can I start with this because I, it's funny, we talked about this for a couple minutes before the show started, and and you and I were on the same page, and we're not that type of show where we're like, all right, let's argue for the sake of argument. If we agree on something, we're going to say we agree on something. If we disagree on something, we're going to say we disagree on something. But this is something that that we agree on. Um, in, in case you missed it, so the NFL is is doing some uniform uh, number changes. So okay. what? Who, so like what? What? Who who the hell cares, right? Who it's it's cares? just not, you know, and it's funny because I I say this all the time. We as NFL fans are bitches. We really are. Charlie Leduff in the house. What's up, Charlie? Oh, what up, Charlie? Drew Lane, Charlie Leduff. Uh, 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 outstanding. Oh, good, you? you know where Charlie's from, by the way? Oh, Drew. Char- Drew Charlie's Key. from L Town. Oh, I needed Key. to point that out for hey, everybody. Hey, everybody, Drew's in the building. <laughs> Drew Lane, Drew. the legend. What's up, Drew? The legend hey, right here. It's radio legend only, please. Always <laughs> <laughs> in front of my name. Yeah. <laughs> radio Hall of Fame. Yeah, hey, amen to since, that. No, Jeez, no, since we're here, no, since we're here, let's get, let's get, Drew. How do you feel about the number change? How do you, I, you think that's going to change the game? No, I don't, but I think it's kind of weird to see number nine blocking for the court. You know, some big giant guy, number nine, holding. Or, isn't that kind of weird? What? Number nine? No. I don't care. I mean. No, it's, it's really so. Running backs can choose numbers one through 49. Linebackers can choose one through, what, 59? Yeah. Uh, and then wide receivers can choose numbers from one to 49 and then 80 to 89. Um, okay, so the center won't be number 19. No, no not the center. Okay, I'm so, okay. So, all right, so center. <laughs> nah. I, I like, I like Drew. Poor Drew just wants to come down here yeah. and do some work, and we suck no, him on the air. We, we come saying, on. Yeah. Well, Give me a break. The ref? Yeah. What do you mean? The, 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 so the, the numbers for O-linemen and D-linemen are still the same. The only, 50s and 60s. Right. But the wide receivers come in 70s. Sorry, Adam. No, not the wide right receivers. Only, only the linebackers, D line and um, O line. That's it. Okay. Right. And then you have, and then you have the running backs who can wear numbers one through forty nine, and then you have wide right receivers who can wear numbers one through forty nine, and then also eighty through eighty nine, and then I think DBs can wear uh, one through forty nine as well, and so that's what it is. But D line offensive lineman. No, online dealer. He said DB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you talking about douchebags? <laughs> Joyke, would it change your uh, position on being number 35? If yes, you were playing? I would have had five. Five? Yeah, five. So the reason I went with 35, I got to a team, uh, and they had two numbers. They had 35 and 38. I'm like, well, if you take 33 and you get five, you can get, you know, it'll be 38. I'm like, but I'd rather just take the three <laughs> and the five, put them together, and get 35. Because 30 was just a hideous number. Uh, it was hideous. To yeah, me. 35 is Verlander. Verlander, uh, I guess, was it Frank Thomas? Yeah. That was his guy. Yeah. Yeah. Big Hurt. Yep. Um, Big Hurt. And Joyke. Yeah. Five. You know, when, and wh- why five? I had, you know what? It's funny. Uh, I wanted five because that was my number in college. And the reason I switched over 
from 33 to 5 in college. Wait, is, I thought you couldn't be number 5 until now. You can in college, but not in the NFL. Right. Okay. All right. And so I was five in college and I was 33 my my true freshman year and my redshirt freshman year. And then I switched over to five once the senior left. Uh, and I was switched over to five because of uh, Larry Johnson, who was uh, one of my favorite running backs in, in, in college, and also Reggie, Reggie Bush. I was like, oh, well, all yeah, the Reggie playmakers. Bush. I was like, all the playmakers ran five, so I, I need to go ahead and grab five. Who, who is the most famous number five of all time? I'm um, In college. In any sport. I'm thinking right Reggie, now. Reggie. It's college Reggie. It's, it's, he was sick in, in college. USC. Oh, yeah. I mean, he really he was, amazing. He was, I gotta he give was it to, sick. Reggie was by far Boy, my five. My, that's a great and, question. Like, what I see. It was my favorite all-time college running back. Yeah, Nick. He college. Was, yeah, Nick. He looked so much faster like, than everyone else. Um, electrifying. You guys were a great backfield. Oh, yeah. You Reggie had a great that I'll, one year was really good. Yeah. So we had so we done some some that has never been done before, which Coach Mikins um, referred to when we had him on the show last week. That me and Reggie both had 500 receiving, 500 rushing yards in the same season. I think Reggie might have rushed for over a thousand, and they had about 515 receiving. Then I think I had about 580 receiving and then like another 600-something rushing. So You know, I, I like it when a guy actually knows his own stats because usually, <laughs> yeah. like I, I talked to Kirk Gibson, he's like, no. oh, I don't know how many home runs. I have no idea. No. And I don't. I really don't think he does. No. But a lot of these guys, I don't believe them. But, Joyke, I appreciate yeah. that. No, Drew, no. you brought up a oh, great point it. because oh, I, I know it. Oh, Joe, yeah. Joe yeah. D, yeah. thank you. you. You know what? I've said this to Joyke, and Joyke got pissed at me when I said this. Like, no. like Reggie – was never going to be what he was in college in the NFL. You, he was faster than everybody else in college, okay? He was never going to replicate that. So I met as a compliment. He was like, no, my boy was still pretty good. Yes, he was still pretty good, but he needed a guy like you. Right. He was never going to be a three-down back in the National like Football Joker, League. A guy like yeah, me. A guy like you probably would have been a good lead blocker. Too. But no, no, all jokes aside, like – he, he could outrun people in college. You're not going to do that in the National Football League. It's just not going to work that way. So Reggie, to me, became more of a quote-unquote complete back when he had that compliment back in you, Joy. And you mm. guys, for that year, that was something special because yeah, you did. got to take the load off a guy that just wasn't going to be able to do the things that he did in college. Joy, have you ever seen a faster guy than Reggie Bush? Is he the fastest player you've ever in played person? with? Yeah. Um... I've seen some fast guys. Uh, Deshaun Washington, um, Javi Best, CJ Spiller. Like I, Javi Best was that fast? Javi, oh. yeah. Remember that Monday night game, Drew? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. You, the guy you was put, shot out of a fucking cannon. If, I mean, you, boom, put, if, just you, put, if you put Reggie Bush, just, um, Deshaun Jackson, Javi Best, and CJ Spiller in a, say, a 60 yard dash, I don't know who wins. Hmm. I don't know who wins. Now, I heard a rumor. That Javit and Deshaun raced at a Cal Pro Day of uh, some other players, and they were just on the they they race and they tie, but you know they both were just kind of like not. They said it wasn't really running for real, or Deshaun wasn't running for real, or Javit wasn't. But I mean, you got a guy in Javit who raced against Usain Bolt in the in the Olympics. Oh yeah, and so. I just, I guess Reggie Bush is just a bigger name, and he just looked so on TV. Oh my God! When you said in person, it's kind of funny. Yeah. But so, is the number thing? Is that a big deal? Are people saying, "Oh my God, I can't, I can't understand what's going on"? If you know, a running back well, is number three. Well, Tom Brady Wah. is. So Tom Brady has a problem with it. Oh, because, he's an older fella. Yeah, he's an older fella, and he's <laughs> used to the old ways, you know, mm -hmm. because he's been doing something the same way for twenty years. And so now, when they throw in this little niche, it kind of, you a professional, just work around it. He'll work around. He doesn't want to look at a linebacker and say, oh, so Mike, he, Mike, nine Mike, nine Mike, nine Mike, because the linebacker. So, you know, you got old linemen who they're used to blocking a 50 number, you know. And so, but that's not that big of a deal. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, is anyone else complaining about it? Or? No, I haven't heard not, anyone. Not, you know what the thing, uh, Drew, I've said this forever. We aren't good. Football fans aren't good with change. You know, you and I grew up in an era when they added the wild card. People what? No, they're going to let everybody in the playoff. The Thanksgiving Day game, okay? And I'm guilty of this. I called myself out. When they decided to add the third Thanksgiving. No. Right, this is the way it's always been. Detroit <laughs> and Dallas. And you know what? Years later, NFL, you were right. There is nothing like turning on that game at night. Yeah. I'm high on trip to fan. I might be asleep by the second quarter, 
But it's great to sit at home and watch a game on a, on a Thursday night. So who night. has that third game We are game good now. with change, Drew. No, no, with that third game, is it going to be different teams every year? Yeah, it's, it's different like, teams every year. Okay. Yeah, All right. different teams every year. That's that's good to have. So what's on, what's on the itinerary? I, I need to know the show log. What's a uh, uh, we're syllabus? Gonna, we're gonna we're gonna bitch <laughs> at Tom Brady because he's Wan, you yeah. know, which, which we kind of just did. Uh, we got UFC coming up. Uh, our buddy Art, who does the Art of Combat here yeah. on Woodward Sports, is 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 going to give us <laughs> a, a breakdown of what's going yeah, on there. On top of stuff. Um, Dodgers will have a fully vaccinated mm-hmm. fan section. Smart it. And Genius with a tip of the stupid. cap to Charlie De- LaDuff, Whitmer will probably travel there to see a game and then tell people she didn't travel mm. there to, to, to see a game. Whoa. And th- this will be... Whoa, Sean. Settle it down there, buddy. Settle it down there, buddy. It's not like it's happened before or anything. Uh, down so, down yeah, that's that's where we're at right Her now. Her father's so, chronically ill, though. I think yes. We can and I, and you know that. what? Here's the thing. So are a lot of people's fathers. Drew, but. exactly. I, I understand it. I'm with you. I get it. I empathize with you. But don't tell Drew Lane that he can't do that. Don't tell Sean Belegian he can't do that. Don't tell Charlie LaDuff he can't do that. Well, what if she... Period. What, what if about she's, Joyke? Joyke, don't tell Joyke that either. Okay. Don't... Have but you I know visited any chronically Randy. ill family members lately out of state? Your family's no. all here, aren't they? Yeah, my whole family's here for the most part. For the most part. But I have family. Um, I'm like, we're scattered as well. But intermediate family, we're here. Um, I, I think she should have said, you know what, I'm sorry. That was something I shouldn't have done. But I love my father so much. If she apologized. But instead, she's taken the offensive. But that's, that's the way it's done, I guess. Yeah. She wasn't vaccinated. You're yeah. right. Yeah. By yeah. the way, did, Charlie, why don't you get up here and get on mic? Take my place. Come on, Charlie. Um, did her kids go on that trip, Charlie? Why, why can't we know this? I'll tell you what. I don't know so if take kids, over. Because I don't it's know private. if her kids it's, went it's, on the it's, trip. It's not our business. She, it, hadn't even said, not our business. she hadn't even said if she went to Florida. She hadn't said it specifically. When? Whose airplane? It matters when you're the leader. Yeah. But, what, what, but what happened if she took a private plane there? Yeah, and when did you get the pilot sick? I don't know. You know. Aren't we all chronically ill? Technically speaking, I love him. <laughs> I mean, you're the leader. Go, Look, my, my brother died recently, uh, and right. I couldn't hold his hand when he took his last breath because we're all in this ship together. All right. That's what we're doing. I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm not a radical non-masker guy, right? right? You get to see your dad, and I don't get to see my brother. Well, okay, that whole we're all rowing together, that ship sailed. Mm. I just took a flight to D.C., stop over in Charlotte. It's like being Rip Van Winkle. Mm. I mean, the whole country's moving. That, air, that airport was packed. And we're up here doing what? Mm. When the governor's doing that. Yep. That's the point. That's yep. the point. Yeah. You, okay. I, I go see it, Dan. Yeah, you know, and that's, I respect that opinion. I, I respect that. And I think if we're going to, you know, you have to just hold each other accountable. Um, whatever you put out there, make sure you're doing it. Be, I mean, lead by example. And, I, you know, that's one thing that, and what you're saying, that one thing I can't stand is a hypocrite. Right. How but about a hypocrite saying, that shames saying, others not, for doing the same not, things that she does? Saying, just you know, throwing it out there. Just trying to, I'm not saying, you know, she's a hypocrite. I'm not, I'm not, you know, not going to talk down on our leader, but you can't do that. Well, see, I, I, I'll we'll say see hypocrite. I, yeah. Let, let's talk sports. Let's, let's do this in a sports way. All right. Okay. Remember, the director of uh, health, the two big COVID czars underneath her, beat it down to Margaritaville. They took a spring break in the middle of the biggest game of our lives. Did you ever go on spring break in the middle of football season when you're the captain of that team? Um, no, because uh, because spring break is in spring. We playing fall. Well, oh, but you know, boy. I mean, spring practice, <laughs> okay, right? You're gonna, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, Char- Charlie's Rainbow? been all over this. If you guys haven't seen it, Charlie's uh-huh. been all over this. And uh, Charlie doing Charlie things. Uh, Charlie, one of the best things, I remember when, when I was at Fox 2, when you did that, this is probably 13 years ago, when you did the golfing all across Detroit. No, that, that's, that's about five, six years ago. Was it really? I wouldn't even live in here 13 years ago. But. That was, dude, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I'll never forget it because, like, I was doing the sports thing, and they showed that, and I was going, that is awesome. We're, we're, I mean, for people that didn't know, Charlie literally kept taking strokes all throughout the city of Detroit. 18 and, miles. How long, how long was it? Course record. Gosh, was that awesome. Great stuff. <laughs> That's what else record. is going on with you, yeah. man? Well, I'm uh, 
working on a network with Drew. I got the no bullshit news hour. I'm a columnist with uh, Deadline Detroit. All that Whitmer stuff, I'm breaking it. Oh. And then they're not answering me, and then they're giving it to friendly media. So it's it gets pushed down a little bit, but that's okay. Because anything big going on in the news, you go bet it's coming through the no bullshit news hour. I'm working on a documentary with Disney. You, oh. know, you can buy my books or just, you know, then it got a new book coming out in Poland next month. What's the no name kidding. of it? Uh, work and Other Sins. Okay. Awesome. What is it about? Regular people. Hmm. Regular people. Like, t today we're going to, you know, on my, on my broadcast, we're going to talk about, it's the seven-year anniversary of Flint. Ain't nobody talking about Flint. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about police. Do you know there was three mass shootings in Detroit last week? An, an octuple, a quintuple, and a quadruple that the police dropped two guys? Dead? Mm. Did you know this? No. Why no. would we know this? If all this is going on in the world, mm. and we don't know about what's going on with the media, we need to know. I Do you know that agree. shootings have gone up 100% over the last two years in Detroit? 50% the year before COVID, and then from this time last year to now, another 50%. Do you know that about 50% of the Detroit police force has less than five years experience? Do you know rookies are going into basements together, taking the guy that's whacked out on meth out, but shooting each other? This is real things. Mm. This is what I'm trying to do. Mm. And if they're, you know, that's the reason to leave general media because they don't want to do it. No, you're but absolutely right. But we need right. it done. No right. doubt about that. No doubt about that. So, what's, a, so, what, so what's your broadcast so, so the people can know? Uh, it's the No BS News Hour. You, know, you, you find it like where all the podcasts are. Okay. Facebook Live, check me out. It's 100,000 strong. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh. 100,000. 100,000. 100,000. It's amazing, Charlie, how quickly, and in, in whether people in the media want to admit it or not, is inconsequential. It's amazing how quickly we've marched when somebody told people to march. It's depressing to me. Yeah, uh, it, it is. It's a, no, no, you can't ask that question. You have to let us know what you're going to ask ahead of time. What? If we, I mean, these are things that are happening that people, the average person, doesn't understand. This shit is happening now. No, and the media should ask because remember, let's take like Iraq, right? We went to Iraq. Mm -hmm. The media didn't really question it. They were afraid to, so we went. We didn't. I went there. We didn't have a plan. We didn't have armor. We just sent dudes in. They came back and they're walking around on popsicle sticks and they can't get an appointment at the VA. This is what we do. I'm asking the leaders to think. Because it's my people that go. Mm. Huh? No. It's all he, a team. He's the best. It, yeah. I, seriously, I, I say that with full respect. And did I mention he's also a Livonia guy? Uh, Joy I, had, I had to get, that, I had to get yeah. that L up for him. I was through well. Garden City yesterday, <laughs> Inkster. Yes. Garden City. <laughs> Dude, I want to oh, watch this. Here's my imitation of uh, Chris Cuomo. Well, I'm coming up. Oh, I've been in that basement. I've been locked away for two, two weeks. Except I was in the Hamptons last week riding my bicycle. Bullshit. You and your brother are bullshit. Fake news. Good to see you. <laughs> Great to see you, brother. Nice <laughs> to see you, man. Charlie LaDuff, ladies and gentlemen. What's up with that just, hair, bro? Just oh, awesome, Sean. Nice to see you, buddy. See you, man. All right, Drew, man. Drew hey, Drew. Charlie LaDuff, what a pleasant surprise this morning. Great to have. I'm not trying to embarrass him. Two legends. I think a lot of people Best of the, in hey, our Drew, business and Drew, outside of our leave, business you know uh, you are love these guys. Art, Artemis, like, he wants to be you. Art. He, he, no, he wants to That's be a you. a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Art's a low bar. <laughs> I'm aware of Art. No, yeah, yeah, Art's a low bar. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, Art, right, put it on your face real quick. Because whenever you come in, he lights up like a, like a Christmas tree. He, yeah, he lights up like a Christmas Drew, tree. I'm going to embarrass you. And, and I know I've talked to you about this before. I'm trying to say goodbye. No, yeah, dude, dude, do you get it? Like, like there are people like me yeah, and Art that grew up, like, like, my morning was you. Like that that was my morning every morning like I'm not I'm, I'm sorry to go fanboy hey, hey, but do you get that do you get like the impact you made I um well I'll leave myself out of it the relationship between a radio host and the audience can be very very intense you spend 4 hours a day with the yeah. guy yeah or the girl or whoever it might be so anyway Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Drew Lane, ladies Drew. and gentlemen. Drew. He's got business Drew's to take care of. Sorry Drew. to hold you up, Drew. All right, Drew. Uh, Love having Drew on. Great hey, stuff. 
Just You're welcome to come on here whenever great. you want to, Drew. Thank you. Great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Hey. Open. We're going to say the chair, Mr. Lane's chair. Only Mr. Lane right. is allowed to sit in that chair, True. okay? Okay. That's what we're going to do. All how right. great How great is LaDuff? I, I love him. How, how, I, 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 that was my first time meeting him in person. Oh, you never met him? In, oh, no, my, my gosh. My first time. Uh, I said we I'm should have a good I'm tapping into his podcast. No, I honestly. said we should have a good Friday show that over oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Right, Hey, Andrew, listen, we'll see you next yeah, week. I, I, we're not going to top anything. Those no. two, we're not going to top that. No, 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 I mean, but you guys before are we okay. go, Hold up, Art. Raise your hand. But before we go, let me tell you about Northwestern Tech. <laughs> Start a new career in an industry that is always essential. The heat and the cooling industry. Learn more today by visiting northwesterntech.edu. Joy Bell, Sean Belizean. Stay tuned. I'm looking to bring out another HVAC tech right now. We are here, downtown Fenton, my favorite Bridge Street Exchange. That's right, and uh, you want to switch up your wardrobe this summer? It's this easy. You ready, Joey? I'm ready. All right, you ready? I like it. You want to do it again? Yeah, let's do it again. All right. Ooh, Brixton, nice. One more time? Yes. Ooh, I like the hat on this one too. You ready to do it one more time, Joey? I'm getting tired, one last one. All right, let's change it. <laughs> Bro, where's your shirt? You need new clothes this summer, Bridge Street Exchange in Fenton. That's where you need to go. Thank you, guys. What up, Dope? Glad you could join us here on Woodward Sports. If, if you missed uh, Charlie LaDuff and Drew Lane in here, you missed out. Make sure you go back and watch it. Uh, they just both turned it on. Uh, respect the hell out of Charlie LaDuff. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a journalist. Period. End of story. There he is. Thank Hi, Joyke Bell. Hi. My, you, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is what well, I'm talking right. about. You told me to put it on Sean. I put it on Sean. Now I got it on both of you. I told you to put it on Sean and put the number up The top. number's right above your head, Joyke. I, right didn't want, I didn't want to be typing in the number while on the screen. I can do Art. it in two camp, Joy. Happy Friday to you two. It was going so well. <laughs> Don't it we was, have a caller? It, it was going we so well. have a caller? It was 313-552-6322. Let's go to the aquarium. Uh, Fish, I believe we have Pete hanging on the we line. Do. What's up? Joy, Art's trying to do the best job. Just give him a little break. We have Pete on the line. Fish, you do your job. I am doing my job. There's a okay. lot of stuff going on. I had to run back and forth because people were going crazy. The cam was an audio. Thanks for having my back, Fish. Fish, you are I the try. best. I uh, try. We have Pete who wants to talk about the best number fives. All right, all right let's fish. do it. Pete, you it, thank fish. you so much for joining us. How are you, Pete? Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Tremendous. I love Trailer Dove podcast. You got to listen to it. No BS. He's excellent. Oh, he's the best. Yeah, he is. He is. And Drew Lane, Drew Lane's podcast, the Drew and Mike podcast. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, that's number five. The Lions, Matt Prater. I thought I can find out. Yeah. The Wings, Nick, Nick Lindstrom. Easily. Okay. And the Tigers, Hank Greenberg. Oh, Hammer and Hank. Yeah, Hammer and Hank. Yep. Yeah, good call. Absolutely. All right, man. Th yeah. No, appreciate you. Tell me what. Okay, take, take care. Take care, guys. All right, Bye. Take, right, take care. care. Look at that. Bye. Yeah, you know what? Um, it's pretty hard to go against Nick. I, I always, I, you've heard me say this a hundred times. Um, I, when I, when I have conversations about the best, okay, I only talk about guys that I saw. All right, and and you ask the average hockey guy who's who's the best defenseman of all time, they're going to say number four, Bobby Orr. I, I, the Bobby Orr that I saw was playing on basically no knees. Okay, uh, end of his career. I was a little kid. Nick Lidstrom was the best I ever saw. I mean, I'm not saying that because I live here. He was the best I ever saw. And 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 the interesting thing when you talk about Nick Lidstrom, and I I think I told you this, Joy. I asked a bunch of scouts, okay, pro scouts and amateur scouts, what is it that sticks out about Nick Lidstrom? What 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 is it? You know, when when you look at him and say he's a young prospect, what sticks out to you? And you know what everybody said? He he. He just thought two steps ahead of everybody else, and you could see it. You could see it. And guys that played against him said the same thing. Like, you're just like, how did he know I was going to be there? He was, he was playing chess when everybody else was playing checkers. He just mm -hmm. had – and I'll tell you what, one of the – his nickname is the perfect human being, mm -hmm. and if you met him, you'd know why. He is just a gentleman. He's just a – like, he really is 
Joyke, I'm not joking. He's just he's a wonderful man. It's it's yeah. incredible. It's it's weird. It 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 kind of freaks you out. It's like, are you really are you really this nice and humble? He's really that nice and humble. Yeah, it's Seriously. it's yeah, it's you'll never know. If you never know, in a million years. You never if you never ne- met him, you never knew. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna time. tell you a very quick story that that I've never ever told before. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. If you, whenever Sean says he's about to he's about to say a story, tune in because he tells the best stories. I've never ever ever on the air told this story before. Um, Nick didn't. Can you say it? Is it is it okay? Yeah, okay. Nick didn't. Nick didn't live too far from me, and so I was in the neighborhood where Nick lives, and. Nick saw me and said hello, and and I didn't know him all that well, but I knew him well enough. Hey, how are you, Nick, and and all that. And we were talking, and it was after the season, but before he retired. And he, I, I, I said, so what's what's going on, man? Are you are you gonna you know, are you gonna come back next year and everything? And he hadn't made his announcement yet and everything, and he kind of smiled, and he goes, well, I'm I'm gonna think about it the next couple of days and everything. And I didn't mean it, but he kind of told me he was going to retire and you know what out of respect for him i didn't say a word i i could have gone on that air the air that day and say uh sources tell me that nick lidstrom is going to retire but i yeah he deserved to go out the, the way he wanted he was just having conversation with me uh-huh. you know what and i didn't want to like this i'd do the same thing for you or you would any athlete i i'm not going to betray you. you're trusting me we were having a conversation as two human beings I didn't have my microphone in front of me or anything like that, but I, I, I was just like, oh, wow. Well, good luck with that, man. You know what I mean? What do you say? And you know what was funny? I, I sat on it for like three days. I never said a word and, and just like, but that was Nick. He, he was just so unassuming. He's just having conversation with you. If I wanted to be a jerk, I could have said, uh, breaking news, uh, Nick Lidstrom's going to call it quits. And I never said a There's word. never been you. Oh, he's, such a, he's, he's just a good it's funny, Vinny said, met him a few times, most genuine, humble dude, him and Chris Draper both. Yeah, he uh he was boy, he was something else. He was he was really something else. Are we up against a break again? No. We got about No, Arthur's yelling at me. He's saying that I'm we not, need to take don't a Don't tell Joyke I'm yelling, otherwise I gotta hear it from Joyke again. He was doing this. Let yeah, me, just be, when you, you know, let you know correct. you and I know that relax, when I Artemis, do this symbol, it's Artemis, at your relax. discretion. Artemis, relax. Ooh, raise your hand. Relax. Use your hand. I got your back, Art. I'll send Adam in here real quick, Joy. Fish, <laughs> relax before we, I take the water out of the aquarium. <gasps> oh! Well, that's fine. You take the water out of the aquarium, they'll go through videos. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, I need fish. Art, you can go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Eight Mile Vodka, born in Detroit, is distilled in single 90-liter batches to allow for optimal quality control and care, then carbon filtered, aerated, and bottled at the perfect time to produce a subtle taste with smooth finish and character all its own. It's an exceptional premium vodka that can be chilled and enjoyed straight or mixed to create an exceptional vodka. My wife and daughter, daughter, son, Love the Moscow Mule with this stuff. And uh, shout out to my neighbor, George, who is behind this. Great guy, great family. Next time you're out, ask your bartender for an 8-mile vodka or pick up a bottle at Meyer. And please always drink responsibly. As a football fan, do you give a damn that the numbers are changing? I think it's kind of cool, to be honest with you. We'll get your thoughts next. He's Joy Bell. I'm Sean Belegian. This is Woodward Sports. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. And at Hall Financial, we treat our clients like family. And our number one priority is giving each of our clients five-star service. Our passion for five-star service, combined with our expertise, allows us to find the best possible solution for refinancing your home loan. We take the time to focus on both the individual and the numbers. We're gonna walk you through the process and close your loan in half the time of our competition. Go to davidhallmortgage.com today. There. They told me I had the bottle the wrong way. So there. There's your eight mile vodka right there. And we appreciate that. Joy, I'm going to a two cam. All right. Just to make sure. (laughs) (laughs) Now now you're doing your job now. Now So here we go. You ready? Yeah. Joy, be nice to fish. Fish. Fish, uh, that, That comes from Jenna. Tammy said, fish is feisty today. You go fish. 
Woodward Sports said, fish, fish, fish. Vinny said, fish is on another level today. Started with the morning show and is carrying over. Carrying over. Fish, you just, you do your job. You, you No, I'm serious. You you know, you do your job. Nope, no, yeah. I got no issues with that. Neither does Joyke. I don't. Uh, unless when I come in here and my laptop is, uh, on my surface is about to die or the scripts aren't here, but I he's need a, on it. I need a full-fledged fish cam one day so people can see, see. Joyk, like, like what fish does in the two minutes before the show starts because, like, you heard him say running around. He's he around. runs around, folks. He does. He he run. He comes up here and gets us water every, every day, day without being asked. Every yeah. single day he has two two cups of water here. I'm not going to pick up the other one. Yeah. And he, and he, he puts your initial on it, Jay. Yeah. Wait, your, he your, puts your, your initial S- on it? Yeah, he puts your initial on there. Wow. Wow. I don't think I have mine on there. Uh-oh. Well, he's Mr. Bell, so yeah. that, I, I can uh, accept that. But then, he must have done something to my coat because Fish doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's right, from I'm a, I'm in do it. Something. He runs to his booth. He runs back here to set the computers for us and everything. Like, Fish, Tip respect. 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 And while, while he's doing all of that work, Art is in that booth doing nothing. <laughs> Moving the camera up and down. I come in, I can't move the camera left or right, I can only go up and down. Like, what is your job for? Like, what are you doing? I'll get the atomic dog in here right now. Uh-huh. He, will, he, he will like shut it down. You know, can, can we be like honest riding. this morning, though? The atomic dog was kind of in a good mood this morning. No, he, was. he wasn't. Yes, he was. <laughs> no, no, for him. I'm, I'm talking about, <laughs> like, usually he's here where it's, I keep my head down. He, yeah, like, you know, him, you, you know we why? We had he, conversation today. You know why he was here with Art? Why? Because when I came in, I said, Art, we need to move my chair over. Art said, no, we don't. It's perfect. <laughs> and then when the show gets started, Atomic Dog comes in here, sneaks under the camera, and pulls me to the side. I said, I needed to be pulled to. And, hi, Art. Is that true, Art? I'm getting emails from Adam now, so thank you. You ruined my job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to start calling him Mr. Right. Atomic Dog or something. Put yeah. some respect on his name. Stick, what up, though? What up, though? We're going to get you on here, too, because we got to have a conversation with, um, with your stance on LeBron. And why he's not the greatest of all time. What's wrong with you? Let's do that in the second half of the show. All right, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. No, no rules Friday, but second half of the show. Let's stay on topic, Joy. Uh, so, Joy, let's finish up this topic. I, it, it's funny. You and I were talking about this before. We football fans are not good with change. We just aren't. I, I've lived it my whole life. You know, I, you know who else is not good with change? Who's that? Art. We but have we'll a say- script that we have to stick to. We'll stick to the script, but just for future reference, this is our show. You're the producer. You stay behind there. I'm actually right, here we go. the director. All right, all right, raise your hand. Go ahead, Sean. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you know what? It's it's. I, I've lived it. I, I remember when they brought the wild card in. I was like eight years old. My, you would have thought my the way my old man reacted. You would have thought that they like changed the game of football. And as a little kid, I was like, Why are you so mad at this? What what? It's an extra playoff team. Who gives a crap? And then they added more. Oh, they're going to let everybody in the damn playoffs. And it's great. It's and great for even the game. now, like, Joy, Joy, it's great I for the love game. that they expanded the playoffs. I know you don't as a player love this. You know what? I love 17 games. I do. I've already, I've already loved it. I know it's not good for you guys, and I, and I respect you for that. I get, I'm not the one punishing my body, so yeah. I can sit back and be a selfish sob and go, you guys keep smashing each other for my enjoyment and everything. I love 17 games, yeah, and less exhibition keep, for, games. For, I for might us, add for us to keep smashing each other for your entertainment. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what it that's is. That's exactly what it is. Let's not call it anything else that's yeah. what it is yeah. right so, or wrong that's what it is if they were paying us more i'm pretty sure the players wouldn't have that big of an issue with it and you know i'm on your side there yeah i mean that in all sincerity all right i'm no, not they're paying us more i'm not smooching your behind yeah i think if anybody needs to but the owners are smart I, they're, oh. they're smart business people well and that's why i know and i've called him out before i've called him out before but i'm gonna call him out again I think your boy Demora Smith has to do a better job. Yeah. A period yeah. of story. I, yeah. I don't. I, no. I, there are things that are happening in the National Football League right now, and we have been told for years, and you might even remember last year they, they came out that double secret memo of the players' union telling all the players, be smart with your money in the next year. 
um, save your money, put it away, prepare, because we're really digging in the trenches. What happened to all that? They capitulate all the time. It, do, do you do you want something to change? You tell those guys, guys, this is the line. This right here, okay? I know we've said it 97 times beforehand, okay? But you aren't crossing that line. And if they cross that line, you know what you have to do? Yeah. You have to pull the plug. You have that's the only way that things are going to change. That's it. That's the only way that things are going to yeah, I don't but, want but, that. I don't listen, advocate for that, but But listen, but this is what happens in these, in these negotiations, right? You you get in the, you get into these negotiations with these teams, right? And they dangle this out in front of you because this is what you want. But they have this door that's unlocked, right? But we're not looking behind that door. And so, for instance, where we say we want to cap on, we, we you know, the veterans are like, oh, we want to cap on the rookie contracts in the dra- draft because we're proven and you have rookies coming in getting paid $65, $70 million contracts. And so they said, okay, we'll, we'll put a cap on it. We'll take that money, and you know we'll distribute it uh, uh, amongst yourselves. And then they they get that deal, and now that money is not going to the veterans. It's going out, and it's just getting more players to replace that veteran. And so that's those are the things they're doing. They'll dangle it in front of you, and they'll give you what you think you want, and then you get it. It's like making that wish with that evil genie. You know, I want that sunken. I want that sunken ship with all the gold. And then they put you in the ocean with that ship in the water and you can't breathe. You're like, okay, get me out of here. Get me back. And then that's two wishes gone. Yeah. And so that's basically what's, what's happening yep. in these negotiations. Yep. Yeah. And so. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, how about this? Our buddy Joel. Uh, hey, Sean. Happy Friday, bro. Cheers from London, Ontario. Home of the Knights. I've known Joel for many, many years. Uh, talked hockey, OHL, NHL with Joel many, many times. Appreciate you watching, Joel. For mm-hmm. real. Um Joyke, I, I, I think that Tom Brady's making a mountain out of a molehill. It, it's just, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's not all. even, even like Leduff was in here. Leduff was in here, and 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 or no, it was it was Drew, and said, well, who, who are we gonna, how are we going to know who the lineman is? You know, it's really easy. It's easy. Holding number seven, you know, whatever number he's wearing. That's what I mean. Seriously, I think, I think, we're such creatures of habit. That we're not good with any kind of deviation. But but when you take it to its logical conclusion, you know what? If Stick goes from 78, number 78 with, with his length, I had Bischoff like scout Stick out. They loves yeah. his loves his length. He's got great length coming off the edge, okay? What it, what does it matter if it's 78 or 7? Holding yeah. number 7. Offside number 7. What are we doing? It's not. It's not that big of a deal, man. They're doing it in college, right? It... They do it in college. Hi, Arthur. Hi. Uh, permission to speak. My hand. My hand yeah, is raised. You got it. Do good you job, think Art. that? Go ahead, Jake. I said, good job, Art. Oh, thank you. Do you think that it's just memory? Like it... it's muscle memory. Right. That's what like, it is. Brady wants to know. Hey, that's my guy. He's been that number for years. Now it's just like the numbers are scrambled. So I feel like he has a right to be pissed about it. I mean, he... no, no, no. I'm not saying he can't be pissed. I'll never tell a, another person how to feel. I'm just saying those feelings. Art, maybe Joyke is a little bit more like us after he said that line. Yeah. Huh? Let's not get crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, say, I'm not going to tell I'd this man how to feel. I never tell anybody how to think right. or feel. I can't tell him how to think or feel, but I, I can have an opinion about what you think and feel, and I feel that's crazy. You what just, are the chances? But, hold up. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, he's like that kid in the room that, me, pick me, pick me. Just raise your hand and just wait, wait. So, um. But Tom Brady, I mean, he's been doing this for 20 years. You know, that's been 56, that's been 50, that's been 59, his entire career, and now 20 years in, you're telling me to change. Yeah, you're on your way out anyway. So, you're on your way out. You got a couple more years. I was going to play off of your response by asking this question. Go ahead. How much pull does Brady have? They're not going to change anything for him, right? I mean, there's no no chance. He's Brady, though. probably (laughs) Probably on their team. He has a lot of pool. Now, I tell you, the person that had that had the most pool on the team that I played with, and that was Peyton Manning. I've never seen a man with that much power on the team. I mean, with coaches, with GMs, with the players, I've never seen that type of, I put my foot down, we're doing this. Now, I think that's more the old school way um, because I played with players who said that when they came into the league, they played with some veterans that 
whenever they would come out to practice and the coach say it's full pass and he'll walk out there with full pass and one of the one of the vets would tell him hey why do you have that on he said coach said you know full pads he said no 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 we didn't shells today uh we ain't helmets and shells take that off and uh, he'll go back in there and the coach was like what are you doing what are you doing he's like well coach he such and such just told me that we're in shells who who told you that such and such oh all right go put your shells on and that's how and that's how they used to play back in the day i, I remember seeing pay manny come damn I remember seeing Peyton Manny come <clears throat> into a special teams meeting night before the game. Night before the game. And the coach is in there going over the game plan for the special teams. He comes, Peyton Manny comes in, he no knock, just swings open the door. Hey coach, hold on. Hey, I need I need you, 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 and you. Hey, get your bass, come with me. Thanks, coach. And the coach, the coach, this is the board. With all, with the X's and O's, and he has his hand up like that, and he looks at the place. All right, you guys, you guys go with Peyton. All right, and he goes back to talking like nothing happened. I'm in a meme, just like. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that what we doing? Listen, That's Sean, I, I swear to you. I'm there for about five weeks. I didn't know who the offensive coordinator was. I didn't even know his name. That's awesome. I didn't even know who he we're in the <laughs> we're in the meetings after after practice and Peyton is literally going through the film himself. And the reason I found out who the offensive coordinator was, because after like the second week, I'm like, who's that guy down there with the control going back and forth when Peyton says rewind it back? And he's like, oh, that's the OC. I said, oh, remember, that's the OC. Do you remember who the OC was I at the time? I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't remember. <laughs> that, I didn't even buy the Freaking OC, great. The OC was Peyton Manning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you look to the sideline to get the play from the OC, and he has the script in his pants, so he's just going off the script. Hey, give me 22 personnel, 22, 21. You know, so he's doing, give me 10. You know, so um, so he's he's doing the whole personnel change, everything himself in practice and running every play and running the team. And I sat back and I said, you know what? I've never seen this before. This man is on another level. And uh, I remember watching the interview with Coach Caldwell when he was the head coach of the um, coach, and he said that it's hard to coach a man that knows – more than half your staff. Yeah, isn't that amazing? He it, knows more. Yeah, and he's probably knew more than he he knew more than over half the staff. All right, the only person that probably knew more than him was probably Coach Caldwell. If mm. that, you know. So, what's up, Art? Is there anybody other than Manning that can do that? I mean, I feel like Brady's a close second, but that's it. Like those two, I can't think of anyone else that has that. Vote. I'm sure this is a guess, okay? And you are in the room. I'm I'm sure that Tom Brady probably had that luxury at some point in time no. maybe not to that extent under belichick no. no but i but i'm sure that he was able to call his a, now no. what's interesting okay is last year i don't think people remember all right all's well that ends well and you won a super bowl right all right bruce arians and tom brady didn't exactly have a great relationship and that story was out there a lot but what happens when you win people forget about that yeah. People forget about that. But those stories, if you remember, those stories were out there yeah. ab about Bruce and Brady even said like late in the year when things started to go well, hey, I appreciate the fact that he's the head coach, I'm the quarterback, and, and you know, this is the way things have to be and stuff like that. So yeah. it, it was almost like an I my perspective, this is a perspective, was it was an uneasy respect. You know, that, that, that maybe Tom Brady wasn't used to a guy tanning his height a little bit, and Bruce Arians tanned his height a little bit. You know, I mean, it, that those were the stories that came out, and all's well that ends well. They so won a Super Bowl. He, so, so you think he has that power on Tampa, or he has that power, or you think he had that power in um, I This is a Patriots. guess. I'll bet you, even with Belichick being the control freak that he is, 
I bet you they got to a point in time where he was like, I don't need to talk to Tom Brady. Tom Brady knows exactly what's going on. He knows what it is. Where Arians kind of, from the sounds of it, this is just something, Arians kind of said, no, 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 no. This is the way I do things. I'm the offensive guru here. You know, because that's Bruce Arians' MO. Everybody yeah. talks about former quarterback, how smart he is. Um, he His offensive mind is so much greater than everybody else's. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll bet you that was maybe, from the sounds of it, it was, Joyke, it was maybe a bit of an adjustment for Tom Brady? I'll tell you this. When Grunt came out, and he did an interview, I can't remember who he did the interview with, uh, but when he retired... He said that when he played for the Patriots, uh, there was no favoritism. And the a guy that was interviewing said, well, not even for you and Tom, not even for me and Tom. Hmm. Not Interesting. Even, and he said, he said now it's starting to, like, plan, I think playing for Tampa, he said now it's starting to get back fun again. Uh, it was getting back fun again. He said, but when he played for the Patriots, it was, it was this, 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 no favoritism. You have to they held everyone at the same standard. And um and I and I like that. But when you have a guy like Tom Brady on your team, I think it might be it might be one person who has that same type of power that um he might have that same type of power that Peyton has and Tom Brady has. And I don't know if he you know what, I I have an insight over this so I can find out, but probably Aaron Rodgers. I mean when he called out the whole coaching staff I mean rightfully so yeah rightfully so and so he held everybody accountable so he might have that power to be able to do that like he might have the power to be able to go in the meeting I told you I confess my dirty little secret I like Aaron Rodgers I feel so dirty you like him or you like him or you respect him I respect him and, and and you know what I I like him as a football player I do. I, I, I like watching him. He's good for the I'm, game. I'm not going to lie. He's I, good for the game. Hi, Arthur. Do you feel as though <clears throat> players like Brady that have that, hey, I've got rings, I've got, you know, that charismatic attitude, do you think that players, like when he went from the Patriots to Tampa Bay, that players kind of step back and realize their role? 100%. Yeah. As opposed to the coaches, the coaches is like, that's you're running the ship. 100%. Well, it, you know, yeah. And I need you to understand what he went through when he went to Tampa. Because when he went there, they couldn't have OTAs. So he's going there with all new receivers, no new O-line, new running backs, and he's trying to get the timing down. So they didn't get the off-season um, time. But as the season went on, the timing got a little bit better. The blocks got a little bit better. Running back was able to read. Um, the old lineman blocks better. He was able to cut a little bit. I mean, so a lot of things started to happen, and they got better as the season went along. All right? No one, you know, they, you lose to the Saints twice to come back and beat them in the playoffs where it counts. They play good ball when they need to. And that's why I say when the playoff starts, it's a whole new season. You don't know what can happen. I'd like when we come back from break, because we got to hit a break, but I'd like to talk to you, Joyke, about – the biggest difference when you switch teams, when you go to a new team, because you witness it with Brady. You went from the Patriots for years and years and years to Tampa Bay. Joyke has a little bit of experience like that. I'd like some yeah. insider knowledge on what happens with that transition. You know, a lot of time when you do that transition, it's because you're going to another team because it's, uh, you know, they're paying you more. You get more finances. And speaking of finances, have I told you about Hall Financial? Oh, <laughs> look at Sha. Sha loves it. I can't compete. How about I told you guys about Hall Financial? When was the last time you had? When was the last time? When was the last time you checked your credit? Huh? When was the last time you checked your credit report? Check your credit. If it's over three percent, oh, I'm sorry. Let's start over. Let's start. <laughs> Let's start over. We're doing it live. <laughs> We're doing it live. Let's start over. <laughs> Run it back. All right, hang on. Reset. Right. Hey, right. Joy, can you tell us about Hall Financial? No. Hey, hold on, Chad. Come on, Chad. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Chad gets to come up for Chad, a live read right now. I saw now. Chad and Chad messed me up. You want me to show you how to do a live read? Oh. No, 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 no. Oh, hey. I, don't even, I, don't even, I don't even do this and I can show you how to do a live right. read. Do one. All right. <laughs> don't even know what it says. Never practice, never nothing. Just straight in heat. It looks like no question. Right. 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 Watch the craziness. Watch the craziness. Go ahead. Hall Financial. Northwestern Tech. Yes, Northwestern Start Tech. Start a new car. career. No. In, it's, it's no. no. What's going on? We're, We're doing David right Hall. Read. Give him the copy. Give him the Joy, right copy. Right read. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Don't try to play me like that. I get centered in here. There. All right. 
Oh, my boy David, Hall Financial. Now, this is a guy you definitely should get your loan from. When's the last time you checked your interest rate? It's over. It's all been over 3%. You need to call David immediately for a five-minute mortgage checkup and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. Hall Financial, it's fast. They do all the heavy lifting for you so you can go to David Hall Mortgage, da, da, da. Now get started. I fucked this up. I can be better. I promise. Give me one more chance. Here we go. Hey, when was the last time you checked your interest rate? If it's over 3%, then you need to call Hall Financial for a free five-minute mortgage checkup yeah. and tell them what was worth sent you. Hall Financial is fast. They do all the heavy lifting. So go to DavidHallMortgage.com. Hall Financial, lower payments, better options, and more personal attention. So Love you, D-Hall. Hey. Love D-Hall. D-Hall's been taking yeah, care of people for years. Yeah. He's going to take care of you yeah. as well. Uh, talking about the transition when you go from one team to another, except we're not going to talk about the fucking Bears when we come back. This is Woodward Sports. Sword drop. I don't know what we did right today, but let's see. We had Charlie LaDuff in, we had Drew Lane in, and we have Chad Johnson in. Chad Johnson. I, okay, cool. Sounds cool. good to me. It's a good day. Legends, no doubt about that. Uh, we appreciate everything Chad does. Make sure when you get your haircut, you get your haircut at Lady Jane's. And certainly, uh, we're not all sitting here today without him. He's hold too on, modest. Man. He won't say it, hold so on, I said on. it for and him. And if you guys want to go get coffee, make sure you guys tap into Birmingham Roast. That's a fact. That's a BR big fact. opening our second shop in uh, Royal, Royal Oak, Oak here in a couple of months. Yeah, it'd be called Delicious. Royal Oak Roast. This, I ain't drinking coffee. I'm just like an Oreo shake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you now, the best thing in Birmingham Roast to me, what I love the most, is the acai bowls. It's not acaya, it's acai bowls, and you guys make the best. The be it's the best in the area, and I've been around the different places that try to make the acai, the acai bowl, but they're horrible. But they're not listening to us because they want a Osaki Bowl right now. They want to talk <laughs> sports. They want to know what's going on yeah. in their city. They want to know who's getting drafted. They want to oh know God. when we're going to win. Let's, Let's go. Let's so Let's before go. we Let's went to business. the break, Art asked Joyke a question. You know, we were talking about the transition that Tom Brady mm -hmm. had to make going from, quite frankly, a dictator to another dictator. Bruce Arians is a control freak, especially with his offense. I mean, his M.O., as you well know, Chad, He's the greatest offensive mind out there, and he'll be the first to tell you that he's the greatest offensive mind out there. That's his M.O. So Art asked Joyke, because Joyke, you went through this process oh, yeah. a, a few times, <laughs> what's that transition like walking from one locker room and the way that, that one team does things, walking into another room? The, tough, the toughest thing is sometimes not even a playbook, right? So when I left from um, Philly and I went to the Colts, I went through the playbook. I'm like, oh, this is not tough at all. I got this. I got it. And then I walk into that running back room, and so we have a whiteboard that go that wraps around the whole room, and from top to bottom, all the way around the room was all the audibles. Peyton Manning had so many audibles, it was ridiculous. That was the hardest part, was learning the audibles. I mean, he had audibles named after old linemen that played there years before I got there. And he'll call a player. I'm like, what is that? Who is that? Who, who is John? I don't know who John is. And John was, you know, might have been a, a, a right tackle. Um, and that's you know, outside zone to the right. John, 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 outside, you know, outside zone to the right. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, so that was the toughest thing for me. And so when you go to these different teams, you had to come up with some type of method to help you remember these plays. And that's the toughest part. I remember my rookie year, I had to learn four different playbooks from Buffalo, Philly, the Colts, and then the Saints. I had a week to learn the Saints playbook. And then we went to the playoffs. We played the Seattle Seahawks. And Reggie Bush got hurt. Uh, I think the other running back was Julius Jones. He, he got a concussion. He was out. And it was uh, another running back named Chris Taylor that they didn't trust. They never put him in the game. They had the, run, they had the fullback in there taking carries. And so... I remember leaving the game. We're on the flight going back, 
and I didn't have to re I didn't have to sit with the coach on the way back to learn the playbook because we lost, so we didn't have a, a a next game in the postseason. But he said, "Listen, if you would have won that game, you were starting next week." That Damn. would have been my first start. Was going to be that game, and I had to learn that playbook within two weeks. And now the, the same That was playbook. beast mode, right? That was that's beast, a, yeah, that was that, beast Chad, mode. That's run. the beast mode. That's the beast. Game. Yeah. And I saw that in person. Mm. Ridiculous. I think speaking to the guys, too, you know, the playbook's the playbook. You know, running back position is one of the easiest positions to learn the playbook. It's a translation. It's a, it's a translation. Um, but really, it's really going into the locker room. All coaches have a different, even how Detroit has switched up their locker room three or four different ways. When you get into that locker room, is there camaraderie? Are the guys playing ping pong? You know, is the media? That doesn't it, matter. It, that does not matter when you go into a different team. You've been crying transition. about it for six months on here. How no. They went from regime no, to regime. No. And they took your ping pong table no, out, and all of a sudden, no, you couldn't run no more. Listen, they I had the already been pong, there. They took the ping listen, pong out. Listen, and Drake listen. just went you, downhill hey, fast. Hey, hey, I, I know you run this. I know you run this network. You own this network, but I, this is my show. And what I'm telling you, and what, I, what I'm telling you right here, right Fish. now, is that I've been. I listen. I had already been on the lines for three or four years. I, I was already there. And then so, you started crying because they took out the fucking playbook. But I had already table. been there. I didn't have to learn the playbook. I already knew it, like the back of my hand. Yes. I'm saying going to a different team and learning the playbook, you don't have time to play ping pong. They because, changed the playbook on because, you. You had two different offensive coordinators. I Listen, that those offensive coordinators came from the coach. So, like I said, I already knew the playbook. He came from the coach. And the Saints. And the Saints. I knew both playbooks. And so I knew that. And so when they came in, it wasn't hard for them to, to relearn what I've already learned. And so when I go to a different team, my rookie year, when practice is over, I'm in a, I'm in a running back um, coach's office for another three to four more hours when everybody's already left relearning the playbook. And then going home and studying more and going to sleep at midnight and waking up at five in the morning to get down into the weight room. So that's tough. That's the tough part of being able to be consistent. Right, and so for me, that was tough for me. You know what you said though, and I, I want to get into this because I, I, I think I'm trying to get into Chad's head. I think this is where Chad, where Chad is going. You left Detroit, and this was this was something different, okay? With Bill Bentley, and you know a lot of the guys that you and Chad, yeah. mutual friends and everything, okay? But when you came back, you said it was totally a different scenario here. Like when when you came back oh, in yeah, 2016, came, it was totally different. What was? How do you describe that? How did like like? I whole don't think we've ever building, delved into that. That, building, that goes back to what Chad said. Entire building walking on eggshells. Entire within six to how long was I gone? I was gone for about nine to ten months. Um, eggshells. No one wanted to talk. Things that we would do, like for instance, uh, I think I told you the story before. We will get on a plane, and what we'll do is we'll grab like a twenty dollars from each player. And they'll put their name on the twenty on the back of it, and sometimes guys would take their per diem, which would probably be like a hundred and something dollars just for dinner that night, and they'll take every twenty, put their number on it, and they'll put it in the bag, right? And so you'll have about thirty plus players do it, and so the bag would get up to you know sometimes three thousand, five thousand, whatever the bag might be, and then we'll have the flight attendant shake the bag, and pull one twenty out. And whoever number was on the back of that 20 gets the whole bag, right? And so we'll do that every away game when we had to travel through air. And so when I came back, you know, I tried to do it. And Coach Carwood said, it's a little different now. I don't, you know, I don't. He still let me do it, but he wouldn't let me go over the intercom like we usually do yeah, yeah, yeah. and call out the number. And then I was like, man, this is different here. I remember doing my handshakes. He's, and one person said, we don't do that anymore. I'm like, I can't do my handshakes with my teammates in pregame? What? Was that Bob Quinn who basically came down and said, this it is the way things are going to be? How did that it happen? Wasn't, it wasn't Bob Quinn who came to me and told me that. All right. It was someone else. But, but it could have came but, down but, from but Bob. But it came down. Wow. Uh, the, by the way things are, the way it came down. Um, it was H. The It was the weight room coach. It was H. He okay. came and told me that. And I don't know if that was coming from him, from up top. But I'm just like, wait, what? And then you see some of the players kind of, you know, kind of, yeah, this is how we do things now here. I'm like. I can tell you this from my perspective, and Chad, you probably saw this, the room was completely different. It, it took, like when you went, when you went from Coach Caldwell, and Quinn was already there for the last year, when you went from Coach Caldwell to Matt Patricia, the, the life that was in that room, it was suck. It was like, I'm not, no bullshit. 
it sucked out of the room. Well, like he said, you know, sitting there doing, you know, stuff on the team plane. I'd be on the team plane with Rob Sims and Don yeah. Riola playing poker and Play gambling hundreds of dollars in the front and everything because I get to go on the team plane as a sponsor, right? right? And then, obviously, as time went on, things totally, totally changed where you could sit, where you could go. Could you even move, get up on the plane and even go say hi to someone? I mean, no, was... the rules went from camaraderie, you know, and let's you win, it. let's compete, let's yeah. all build a family. Family here to you like, no, I'm in charge. I'm going to lead this. Everybody stand in line for me, and I'm going to get us to where we need to go. And you don't deal with pro athletes like that, clearly. No. All right. And it just, it just went from treating us like men. The treat, it's already, they're already treating us like kids. We're the only professional sport, only one, that when we travel or at home games, we got a curfew. You tell them grown men. That's getting paid million, millions and millions and millions of dollars that we have to be in our rooms by 10 o'clock. We got to be in our room by 10 o'clock for bed check. Might tell my boy Drew Stanton because he's third string, not going to suit up on Sunday. Like, you can stay out a little bit longer. I mean, they did have what? different rules. But, no, if you were playing, it's yeah. 10 o'clock. It's bed check. Who's in your room? Who's in your room? I mean, they're smelling your room if you're smoking I went, up. I, listen, mean, I, had a, I, had a, I had a friend <laughs> who played in the league and when I was in college. When I was in college, I did spring break in Miami. He played um, He played for, I ain't going to say what team, but he played in the NBA. All right. Just so happened, during my spring break in Miami, they were playing Miami. I said, bro, I'm in town. I'm like, pull up on me. And so he pulls up. He gets the limousine. And he pulls up with one of his teammates. We all hop in. We go out to the club. We have a good time. We take the limousine back to the hotel at 4 something in the morning. And have a game the next day. I'm like, you guys don't have security on your floor? He said, security. I said, you guys don't have a curfew? He said, curfew? He's like, no, I won't got that. They even let these players bring on some, like, some long road trips. They let them bring their families on the trip. Like, bring your wife, bring your kids, because we're about to be on the road for the next two weeks. So for the defense for all the teams on the league, they have it, curfew. There's not just, like, you go to St. Louis and... You know, you go to the, the Saints and, you know, they don't have a curfew and the Lions do. It may be 30 minutes later, no, but every, they got a curfew. Every NFL team has a curfew. This is, I'm saying, this is the only professional sport where they give grown men a curfew. I don't, I don't get that. Like, we're here, we're, we're professional. We're taking care of our business and we're winning. No. I remember and sometimes this. even an hour not to interrupt Joyk, right? Because they'll have um, walkthroughs and stuff till 8, 9 o'clock at night and yeah. still have a 10 o'clock curfew yeah. to where they get done at 9 o'clock with a walkthrough. They may got I, I 50, you, 60 minutes. I tell you what. <laughs> just to eat. Are we going to do for a break? Because this is one more story. I want to, this is one more story. We got a break. Yeah. All right. Oh, we'll break after the story. Yeah. You know the teaser. Teaser right yeah. Now? Yeah. Huh? Come on, Joyk. Come on, Joyk. Get him, Joyk. Get him, Joyk. Are we going to do for a break? Can I get it? Can I get to it? Yes, hurry! Right. And so, listen, we're overdue for a break, but when we come back, I want to talk about one more story that the Lions and, and I had in London, to where we uh, we got a, got in a bit of trouble, but, but it first, worked out. It, Sean, and you know what? But first, there's Sean. probably something you could bet on. Let's be honest. Which lion is going to break curfew? Check it out at my bookie. Watching any sport is a heck of a lot more exciting when you've got a stake in the game. But regardless of why you play, you need a platform that makes it easy. At mybookie.ag, they make it easy. Whether you're looking to bet NBA, MLB, NHL, whatever the case may be, how about this weekend's UFC 261? My bookie is the best place to bet. No odds can change. If you bet on Masvidal right now to win the fight, you'll triple your money. No, seriously. A $100 wager on Masvidal would net you 300 bucks in return. If you're going to bet, there's one place to do it, and that's my bookie. But you have to take the initiative. Sign up now. Use promo code Woodward to get your first deposit match up to a cool one K. That's $1,000. That's promo code Woodward to get a free deposit bonus and start your day off with a win. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. More Belgian and Bell when we come back. Don't go anywhere. No, we, Stay right oh, here as no, a matter of fact. No, we've got a special wait, guest. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, special guest. Yeah, special guest. Oh, wait. I'm the special guest. Yeah. So, uh, we, we actually forgot to pay Chad for that last read that he did for Hall Financial. So, <laughs> here you go, Chad. There's your, there's your compensation. We'll be right back. I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. And at Hall Financial, we treat our clients like family. And our number one priority is giving each of our clients five-star service. 
Our passion for five-star service, combined with our expertise, allows us to find the best possible solution for refinancing your home loan. We take the time to focus on both the individual and the numbers. We're gonna walk you through the process and close your loan in half the time of our competition. Go to davidhallmortgage.com today. Chad, you just, like, during the break, Chad said, I'm, I'm putting this in a frame. And, and it, I'm sorry, Chad. Sometimes <laughs> during a show, and Art, I know we didn't schedule this, but sometimes things pop up. We got our deposit back from the government for our tax, taxes, right? We hadn't had a deposit in years or, or a return in years. We got our return back. It was a check for a dollar. Cost more to print it and send it. A dollar. <laughs> the Internal Revenue Service sent us a check for one dollar. No time. way I'm cashing that. That's going you in a frame, baby. Yeah, I got that. I got that's that. that's going in a frame, baby. It's got that's, to. That's going on the wall. Are you kidding me? One dollar. Yeah. All right, you tease something before the break. What you got? I did. So we were talking about curfews for NFL players and no the sport has curfews. And so I'll give you an example. So we went to London. Um, first time we played the Falcons. So we're in London. Um, they have a standoff site probably like 45 minutes from the city. And so on Fridays, usually the, the night that you don't have a curfew and you can go do whatever you want. And so on Friday, they moved the whole team from where we were located to downtown um, London. So we're in downtown London and you know the boys, we get together, what are we doing tonight? What are we doing? What are we? And so we end up finding a spot, uh, a club, and I can't remember where it was, but half the team could get in there and they reached capacity, so the other half got, had to go to another spot. And so I remember we were out, and we got back in about four, four or five in the morning. And the next morning we had meetings at eight o'clock. We had eight o'clock meetings. When I walked into that meeting room, I thought I was there early. I woke up, the meeting was at 8.15. I woke up at 8.13, 8.13. Threw on my threw on my pants, threw on my jacket. I didn't have on a shirt underneath. I grabbed my playbook and I was to the elevator downstairs. I, by the time I got there, they were walking into the meeting room. When I get in there, no, it's about ten of us in there. I'm like, am I early? <sighs> Almost half the team people were gone. They wouldn't. They overslept. They had a guy who missed the walkthrough. We had a, we hopped on buses and went to um, the stadium, and we did our walkthrough and came back and this guy was still missing they didn't know where he was well, that, i guess he went this the, explains a lot chad if you remember right. what happened in that so game. it explains the team it explains, it explains a, a win loss so, record well, i mean no, it says a and, lot and so we went so we went to the so we went to the game the following day we started off 21 we started off 21 to zip we were losing we went into halftime and we all looked at each other like we can't lose this game we cannot lose this game <laughs> like we and so uh um, it was so bad that so many people relate to that meeting that the coach didn't even bring it up in a team, like in a team meeting. Like it was so negative. He was Who like, "Who was the coach, Jim?" Yeah, it was Jim. It was Coach Caldwell. And so, uh, so fast forward, uh, we we come back. We end up winning that game off a field goal by Prater, and we won twenty four to twenty one. Defense shut them out second half, and we came back and we took the lead. Uh, and I think Reggie, Reggie played well. And so, fast forward, we go to. Um, we go to London the following year. And now we go back to London. Uh, they don't take us to London. I'm sorry. They keep us out there this time. And, you know, and they give us a curfew on Friday night. Uh, you know, give us some juice. I'm getting fucking tired. I can't. I can't. I'm getting tired. I'm about to fall on, asleep. I mean, give me hold some on, juice. What kind I, of juice? I, 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 I can't throw Chad people drinks, out of the rug. I can't throw people out of the rug. Don't Chad. use names. Don't use names. Who did something? Right, order burn. me one of those Birmingham right. roast drinks. You know Chad's killing me over here. I can't. You, that's what Chad. Chad wants me to come over here and throw all my homies no, out of the rug. I just found no names. You want you want no names? But you know, if if I tell you the story, right? If I tell you the story, some of these stories are in the news, and they know the person, so I can't say the whole story. Chat? Okay. I so can't give them the whole story. Oh, hey, boo. Oh, hey, like Sean says. Sean, bad hey, content. I'm like bad Sean. Content. I'm like Sean. We went I guarantee up. you this. We I guarantee you this. I, I guarantee I have more players come on the show because they know I would never throw them under the bus. Well, that's true. They know, never throw them under the bus. We need to pass Man, we want to hear the around. truth. We want to hear the guts of the story. 
I can't give you that. We want to hear the I'm guts that one. you guys saw. I'm a real one. <laughs> I'm a real. I can't get. I, I don't. My boys, now I got y'all. So, no, I got I no. Got but I got to ask you this: so you guys thought, all right, everything worked out well last year. Everything's going to work out this year. Yeah. And if I remember correctly. <laughs> That was the last game before they threw the hammer. You guys got your ass kicked by the Chiefs, right? That was the following year. Yeah. And, and we had a curfew. And they and set everybody, the player everybody, home. No, that was the first year. That was the first year for smoking weed in the room. Yes. And it was other players in there. But you know what? He didn't throw his teammates under the bus. And he just got sent home. And he got dealt with. And he took it, like, he took it on the chin. He was like, no, I was by myself. Yes, but sir. He, thank you, Chad. Wow. Yeah. See, Chad decides when I can talk. You know, we're getting. No, he didn't. We're getting. I did raise he didn't my hand. Anybody. Damn. Yeah, he's a real one. He, I, he, I never knew that. Yeah. Can we? The comments are flooding. Given. The comments yeah. are flooding right now. We need one story. Everyone wants one story. Like one gossipy story, Joik. You got to have something in you. You know what? Don't. Well, he did. Don't he gave one. Name. You know. Don't name a name. I gave one. Huh? Okay. I, I was going to say, don't name a name. There was more yeah. people involved well, smoking saying, up this, in, that, in that room, yeah. and only one took the heat because he's the real man. That's, that's I never knew that. How that not, I, right. I, seriously, I like, no one knew that. And Chad, you're right. I should have put two and two together, but we're not talking about the brightest we light on the block. We don't smoke alone. Smokers yeah. don't smoke by themselves. <laughs> and <laughs> sticks over. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no, you know what? It, that's that you guys did a good. I never, I never heard that. Yeah, but it, really, I, ne, I never. No, you, and you never will. Okay, all right. He was, he was by himself. He was by himself. He took the heat. He went home. He took it on the chin, and that's what it was. That's the best thing about the league and what the guys miss. And I'm and that's just the fortunate enough I'm to be about. able to be around the guys to know is that camaraderie that you are sticking up for your guy like you would your wife. Yeah. You ain't ratting. You ain't telling. You're yeah. there. It was your teammates, room. your family, it's... we're there for you. They was probably trying to hide the weed for the other player, right? It's... They're a team. They're out there to do a job. They're in their room relaxing. They don't want to be. It's the truth of it. A lot of guys don't want the pills. A lot of guys don't want the Vicodin. They don't want all these Oxycontins. They don't want to ruin their life like that. And there was a bad perception on smoking weed to be able to relax, calm down, get your mind right, Where and that be a great athlete. Where did that uh, perception come from? You know, it comes from whatever it came from. I think it came from, even though Reagan did a good job for us, it was, you know, um, drugs against America back in the 80s, I guess, is where it probably came from. And then, obviously, if you got caught more than two or three times, they started giving life sentences to people, and that's where it kind of just went totally crazy and then obviously it's calming down now because it's a plant but you know a lot of guys a lot of careers uh, a lot of guys out of the league right now that are looking for help that are depressed that are emotional it's because of those pills yeah, that they were taking let's, their whole let's, life let's, let's get back to sports well, that's sports. That's sports when they're injecting you to, to play a game or giving you pills and saying you, you need pills? to play or you're going to get true. cut. You're going to get cut if you don't play the next two weeks. And they start popping you with pills so you don't get cut. I, I, I seen didn't it. take pills. And I didn't smoke either. But I'm not saying I'm against smoking because I'm definitely for it. I would definitely smoke before I had to take a bunch of... I hate taking pills. But Joyce a little bit different, and he's not full of no bullshit. He's not a big drinker. He was never a smoker. He's not a, 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 a pill, big, pill guy. A, but I will tell you that 80% of those people on every NFL team was Need doing that. smoking or mm -hmm. they were taking pills to be able to deal with the pain. And it wasn't a good decision because once these players can't yeah. play no more, Joyce, What's their favorite you know, strand? What's their favorite strand? I'm an indica because I don't need anything that's going to make me up. I don't need anything that makes me up. I need to <laughs> chill. I need to be down. So if you it's indica, we that. down. If it's sativa, get me away from it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the facts of the matter is these doctors and the teams and everybody, their job was to protect the player. And if they were doctors, they should have known what weed does compared to what all these other pills do. So I don't yeah. know. We always try to sugarcoat this shit with all these yeah, you know, doctors and stuff in the NFL. Yeah, it doesn't need more studies. That's all. Scott said, hey, Sean, Remember the quote, that marijuana makes you lazy. Yeah. I can still hear Rashawn Salam saying that. Do you no. remember Rashawn Salam? Yes. He loved the dope so much. He basically smoked himself out of the league. And a couple of years later, when the light bulb came on, I screwed myself. His famous quote was, that marijuana makes you lazy. <laughs> like that. That was that was that was his famous quote. He's yeah. smoking that indica. Yeah. <laughs> but back then, I don't even think they knew the what, difference. They, they didn't even know the difference yeah. between indica and sativa. All right, let's, let's move on to something else that'll make people laugh. <laughs> we got to go to break. We got to go to break. All right, break. we're going to do that when we come back. Art, I want to tap into you. Uh, big event Wait, coming. Wait, what? You want to <laughs> tap it? To be 
Can we go to break, please? This well, you guys up. all have your minds in the gutter, okay? Yeah. I, got I a miss good the story days of Ronald we, Reagan, I damn it. A, I got a good story when oh, we come back no. that I'll tease in it. It has to do with getting your uh, vaccine shot. Uh, Timmy, who worked for me, got a second vaccine shot yesterday. But the story I have been putting out of what happened to him will make you pee your pants. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Chad Johnson joining us. It's Woodward Sports. It's nuts here on a Friday. Literally with the story I'm about to tell you. No other way we have it right here on Woodward Sports. I'm looking to bring out another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Tech. So this story you can't right do here. that while we're in a break, <laughs> Chad. You can't. And then, yeah, yeah. The best thing is about it, we have Art in the background, four, three. three. He yeah. gave us the punchline right before two, and it's like, there yeah. is no way in hell I'm going to come out here and go, hello, I'm going to be professional after you told us that yeah. story. And the analogy that you use. So, uh, yeah, so yesterday I'm in meetings all day and we have a couple of people coming in, you know, to add the content and Timmy walks in who has been working for me for a long time and he gets his second vaccine shot. <laughs> so as he gets his second vaccine shot, I look over at Terry to tell like this bullshit story that I might be able to pull off. I'm like, but the bad thing is, Terry, you won't believe this. I mean, he started to get a headache, but then he started to get like a little scratch, you know, in his nuts area. And... All of a sudden, he went to bed, took some time, figured he'd wake up. He woke up, and his nuts were dissolved. He had no nuts. He basically had an empty pocket. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Terry's looking at me, fully can't believe this story, but it's, he's hook, line, and sinker sold on it. So I text him last night. I text him last night, and I'm like, Terry, don't tell anybody about Timmy. He's very <laughs> embarrassed. Your wife okay, but nobody else. Just say a prayer. <laughs> Just say a prayer. He sends back I would never. I feel horrible for him. <laughs> So then my brother's like, this is way it? too good. We got to, to keep oh. this story going. Who do you text that to? Oh, my gosh. My guy, Terry Abolt. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there's people walking it was around. An empty bag. That thinks Timmy's got an empty bag. I need to get my second <laughs> shot. I need my second shot. <laughs> Do they know you? Are you brought, is this even possible? Are they, are they making you get the first shot again? <laughs> Uh, no, it's just if I want to get the second <laughs> shot, I can wait up to like 60 or 90 days. But if it's going to give me a vasectomy, I'll go get it now. I <laughs> uh, See, I, I, was, I have to get my first shot again, Art. They told oh, me I real? have to get my first shot again. Listen, you, well, you, you did Pfizer? Yeah, I, yeah, I had gotten the one shot. Oh, and then Pfizer like two too. days later, I found out, you know, my daughter came home and goes, Dad, I, I got it. And then I was like, all right, I have to. Because I the only reason, full disclosure, the only reason I got tested is because I work here. If I if I didn't work, I was never gonna go. Why go? I'm gonna get sick. Okay, cool. If it go if it gets bad, then I'll go to the hospital. But if I'm not bad, why would I go? The, so the only reason I did it is because I know I work with you guys. After mm-hmm. of course after I found out that we had it, and so it was when I got done, I said to my doctor, I was like, Oh, cool. Can I go get my second shot now? And he's like, No, you gotta. You got to start the cycle. Start over. over? I'm like, and but but the Never cool thing is, that he, on the media. He, Maybe he have to told start me. Over. He told me I don't have to do it. He goes, you don't have to do it now because you got the the antibodies and everything. Mm-hmm. But in so, six months you will. Yeah, in six months I will. So I'm I'm gonna go do it. Like I'm gonna go do it in the summer. I'll just. Are get, you worried about what happened to Timmy at all? I, I do not want an empty bag. <laughs> There is no way. It's already empty. Yeah, it has been emptied. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's been it's been shooting blanks for a long time, long time. Shooting blanks. So, I can't I, I can't stop looking at that thing. What is that's that? That's good. That's a, that's a, that's an Oreo shake. Probably about how many calories I got in this thing? Maybe six hundred. I was gonna say five eighty six. Yeah, but it's delicious. Beautiful. Check out Birmingham Roast if you haven't yet. Too seriously, it's. Uh, it's a great spot. Art, what's going on this weekend? What, what's got you fired up? It's fight night with Art. In case you did not know, shame on you if you did not know. One of the cool things here on Woodward Sports is 
the art of combat. And uh, Art does a great job with that. But what jumps out to you about this card? I, I mean, there's so much. There's three title fights. If you look at the card right here, you got Usman and Masvidal 2. The first one was a 50 to 45, but there was a lot of foot stomps, a lot of bitch movement from uh, Usman, to be honest with you. He's one of the greatest welterweights of all time, but he's also the most unlikable welterweight of all time. What's the odds on that fight? He's got to be three, four hundred yeah, to one, plus right? Three. He's plus three, but I mean, that's the fight game. That's what's great about the fight game is that anything can happen. Uh, when you look at the rest of the card here, there's two other title fights. Wei Li, which the UFC is really trying to brand as the Chinese champion and she is going up against Thug Rose uh, that's going to be a great fight that's going to you know listen if you are a, an MMA fan and you're like I hate women fighting watch that fight it will change your mind Sh uh, uh, Valentina Shevchenko against Jessica Andrade is another one and then we've got uh, those are just title fights three title fights and one UFC pay-per-view card then you've got the former middleweight champ Chris Weidman going against Uriah Hall and then Anthony Smith going up against Jimmy Crew. If you're going to watch it anywhere, you need to watch it with us. We'll save you the money in the pay-per-view. And uh, you could watch the UFC Art of Combat watch party this Saturday at Woodward Sports. Yeah, you know, it's funny. A lot of people are saying what a, what a huge card it is and everything. You know, mm -hmm. Art, I've told you this before. No disrespect. I live this, okay? I'm a hockey fan. I get Most people don't give a shit. It's fine. I, I'm yeah. not going to lose any sleep over mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, the UFC, th it, like... In, I used to watch it when it first came out, like 95, Tank Abbott, you know, Hoist Gracie, all that. Yeah. I, I kind of got out of it. It was just like, okay, this is cool. But, like, the way I always use this analogy, Chad, my sports plate, my sports plate already has enough on it. I, I, can't, I can't fit any more on it. You know what I mean? Now, do I follow it because it's my job? Well, yeah, but in terms of getting in up to my waist in it, dude, I, I just can't do it. I'm almost identical to you. I don't think that I've watched very much of it until Art got me on it and the network and, you what? know, watching his show, to be honest. His yeah. that show's cool yeah. because he brings the passion. You're not kind of watching the fight, but you're yeah. watching their reactions and them talk about it. Yeah. I thought it would be like, nah, that ain't for no, me, no. but I, I, I kind of like it for real, for you real. You know, it's funny because... If you watch our show when he does those, he can make you a fan. Yes. He can make you a fan of For the game. For sure. And that's one thing I, I, I get to you, Art. You, are, you do a great job with putting your passion in the world. Well, I'll tell you this. Vinny makes a great point, and here's the comment. In case you missed the morning show, UFC 261 is going to be better than sex. It is. I mean, it's literally one of the biggest cards of the year. Well, he uh, might be drunk early this coming, morning. Uh, I mean, <laughs> coming, from, coming from our saying, it, it is with seven kids. This is... No, I big. mean, listen, the UFC has done a great job of making multiple title fights. That's what sells a pay-per-view card. If you want to see heavyweights bang, you're going to get pay-per-view out of that. But anything less than that, you've got to be able to build it. The Usman and Jorge Masvidal, too. Here's a fun fact. Jorge Masvidal came from bare-knuckle fighting with Kimbo Slice. Yeah, so the, I was just about to ask you about Kimbo. How did you feel about Kimbo Slice when he fought... When he came from street fighting over the UFC. I'll tell you this. When it was first announced, Dana White shit on Kimbo Slice. Said there's no way a bare knuckle fighter can come in and do work. He fought Houston Alexander, who was a badass, and wrecked his shit. So it's like, there, with mixed martial arts, that's what's great about it. You putting two people together, there's been situations. Look at Holly Holm and Ronda Rousey. I bring it up all the time. Plus 800 underdog for Holly Holm. What does she do? Kicks. Head kick. Boom. Knocks out Ronda Rousey. Blows the world up. Anything can happen in the fight game. When you guys think of football, you watch the Lions, you know they're probably going to fucking suck. With UFC, you never know. I mean, it's literally one punch, one hit could change the world. So that's what makes it exciting. When you got three pay-per-view fights like you do this weekend, three title fights, it really is the most exciting it's thing funny, ever. Holly Holmes that. came from the boxing game, though. Yeah, so she when she came in game. and fought and she, she was boxing. And guess who she's training now? She all boxed her. So she's training yeah, Clarissa, Clarissa Shields. Clarissa Shields. You know, it's funny, Clarissa Art, uh, like, honestly, when you said that, and I'm, I'm showing my age here and I don't give a damn, um, when you say, in boxing, we didn't see that. That's why everybody makes such a big deal about when Leon Spinks beat Muhammad out, Huh? How the Buster Douglas? Mm. That's it. That, 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 never. That's a Mike Tyson was the baddest man on earth. You looked at Mike Tyson and crapped your pants, right? right. And, and so it's funny that you say that because in boxing, those are two fights that were twelve years apart that yeah. people hold on the pedestal for for being upsets. In yeah. UFC, you guys almost go, oh yeah, okay, just another fight card. Well, here's the thing: we're going to be covering the card coming up at one o'clock. The Art of Combat podcast live on YouTube on Twitter. Make sure that you tune in because it's not just me. I'll be honest: when it comes to picks, I got too much of my heart instead of my brain. I go with who I like. But we've got Matt from Detroit Sports Betters who is on a tear. We've got Mike Broadwell who's on a tear. 
You got, I surround myself with smart people. I go with my heart, they go with their brain. Make sure that you tune in. Great stuff. He surrounds himself yeah. with smart people. By the way, I want to yeah. rewind about five minutes ago in case you guys missed it. Joik showed Art some love. So I want you all to make a mental note of that. And, and Art, yeah, most importantly, I want you to make a mental I note of that. I fed it into him, though, yeah, Sean. Yeah, he did I it because fed some love here. into him, and he yeah. continued on with it. That's you know the argument. Because I know him real well. That's I know studio, him real well. That's the studio camaraderie that we have here. We have exactly. a we're family oriented. We argue, we fight. And then we kiss, we make up. No, we ain't kissing, bro. Don't be weird. Don't be weird about it. Don't be weird about it. I ain't touching the XO art. XO XO art. All right. Uh, so there, there's some allegations out there about uh, Logan Paul. I, yes. I just heard this. No, Jake. Jake. Jake my, Jake, my apologies. It's is, is, is Jake. Paul. There's some allegations about Jake Paul. Uh, Logan Paul is going to fight. I hope he gets disassembled. To be honest, with you. I, I, I want, I want to watch that, and I want to watch him get. Disassembled, right. like like systematically disassembled. So, I, you remember we were talking about that the other day? Yes. I, I'm not paying. For, I'll pay for that one. I mean, I, I'm going to pay I for mean, that you one. Fought, I, you think this man is going to get in the box and be one of the probably pound for pound greatest fighters of all time, and and, and give him a run for his money? I mean, no this guy, this guy done fought Conor McGregor, he done Victor Ortiz, he done fought Manny Pacquiao, some of the greatest. Bo- well, what are you doing? I want to watch him. Well, we I'm, know what he's doing. We know that this hey, is just hey, for fun. We know it's a sure. money grab. We know that I mean, Floyd but you knows know, how to make the money and build it up. And this, I'm gonna tell you this though, he's just gonna get embarrassed. He might not even punch him once. I mean, he's a true defensive fighter, true Floyd. Defensive fly. You know, counter puncher. Like you might not even lay a hand on him with these big old whatever yeah. you're gonna try to throw. <laughs> yeah. I want, I want to watch what? him like, like. Seriously, destruction by fifty thousand paper cuts. Yeah, they were I, I, to... I just like boom. Boom! Just over <laughs> fifty thousand. I, I like. I'm gonna enjoy every second of it. I'm not gonna lie. Here's my Real thing, quick. though. Hold on, hold on, Art. Yeah. Um, weren't they supposed to fight in December? No, in February. But here's the thing. And they, None of this matters. It's an exhibition bout. That's what pisses me off, and that's what ruins boxing. You tried telling that to Apollo Creed. Yeah. That was supposed to be an <laughs> exhibition too. <laughs> But seriously, do you have? I don't have any interest in it. Shy, shy. That was good. I don't have any interest in it because it's exhibition. It means it means nothing. Why are we like? Sure, it's entertaining, but it's the boxing circus, and that's why boxing doesn't sell shit. UFC. Yeah, watching. it was like the other day when I said I want you and Choff to fight. Listen, it's meaningless, but it right means now. a lot to us. I'll do it it right means a now. ton to Sir. us. You and Choff right. fighting. It's meaningless. Hey, you know what's funny? But we all want to watch I'm it. And see I'm gonna I'm tell you this. Yeah, and, and just, before you say anything, Art, let me say this. I leave. I, I get off. We finished the show yesterday. I sit down next to Choff. This is after I chose my one. I like Choff probably win. Choff said, "You know what, Joe? I appreciate you picking me because I'll beat this out of Art." What? He can get it. See, I'll just, promo, like, that's what here's my about. money. I'll be the he first person. I mean, Twenty dollars. I'll be the first person Trump, to buy pay per view. He sat down next to me eating a acai bowl from, <laughs> from Birmingham roast, and, and he said, "He said I appreciate you voting for me because I'll beat the out of art." Listen, he looked Cardi, me in my eyes when he, he said says it. The only I believe it. He looked me in my eyes when he said it. Listen, I'll tell you this, okay? I'm not the bitch of Woodward Sports. Anybody can get it. Other than Darren McCarty, maybe. He can get it, too. But listen, Choff, he's not touching me. If it's boxing, he's got cardio. Let's let's roll. Let's turn it well, into a full Well, what is it, boxing? Match. Of course, he gets the punch. Man, yeah, it, hold on. First of all, full UFC. Thing, not just punching. I want full MMA. Full Bro. MMA, yeah. Let's say Hey, up. I got Choff for 20000 That 000. doesn't mean. What? That, oh. 20 racks, oh. Choff. Oh. On my show, you said that? Yes. Wow. You know what? Sign hey, up. I'll give you 30 days to train. No, I want summer. Give me summer. Oh, he wants no. summer. No. June 1st. No, no, we'll give hey, we'll give you what the box. You get you get six weeks. If okay, you guys don't six know, weeks. let me let me six say weeks, this. That's it. Okay. Choff is like you, you know, this is overused, the nicest human being. It is. Choff is ear to ear smiling all the time. Do you know Choff every day goes What's up, Star? What's up? What's up, Super? Like, always has something nice to say. Smiling. He's the smiling assassin. He is. He but over. He but says, the only thing I got maybe wrong here is Art's got way, way too much anger in him. Me? I'm just happy. That's the only thing. I'm happy. No, Art's got anger coming from every you know what he's I got? got. That's I got, weird. Cause I, you, cause you say you love Art because he's so happy all the time. No, I'm happy like I don't bring my personal shit here, but I'll tell you what, I got child support payments. I'm fighting with anger. I got a lot of anger. 
Chop hey, sunshine hey, and rainbows. Hey, listen to me. Those child support payments make it. Hey, hey, they, they bring make it out you of you. <laughs> they bring it out of you. Are you rethinking hey. now? Are you rethinking hey, your wager? You think you think, you think they, where, you, where you think these sip balls come from? <laughs> True, true. Fish, what do you got to say about this? I mean, you think you got you making a wager? Who you got? You got Art or you got Choff? Um, I'll go with Art. Oh, you got Art. Right. Why, why are you striking your shoulder? Like, who you got? Who you win? Because <laughs> I don't really have anyone. Well, tell me why you got Art. What's, what's Art going to do to Choff? What's, what's Art going to do to finish Choff off? Well, I think Art will have the reach, and Art will just whip around and snap him. Ah! <laughs> Art doesn't have the he reach. He got the reach to whip around. Chop has the reach. I'll tell yeah, you what. Yeah, but I, I can't see Chop hitting. Like, he'll talk, talk, talk in the ring. I'll just be like, oh, hey, Art, can we be friends? And then they'll be friends. Listen, I'll tell Good you job. what. Good job. Fish. I'll take Chop and Easy in the same night. Set it up. <laughs> All right, we gotta we gotta figure this out when and where and how we're gonna do this. This is happening. Now this is happening. When we come back, when we come back, we're gonna talk about this fight between Art and Chop. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna try to figure out a date while we're on break. All right. Stay tuned. Joy Bell, Chad Johnson, Sean Belizean. Stay tuned. We are here, downtown Fenton, my favorite Bridge Street Exchange. That's right. And uh, you wanna switch up your wardrobe this summer? It's this easy. You ready, Joey? I'm ready. All right, you ready? I like it. You want to do it again? Yeah, let's do it again. All right. Ooh, Brixton. Nice. One more time? Yes. Ooh, I like the hat on this one, too. You ready to do it one more time, Joey? I'm getting tired. One last one. All right, let's change it. <laughs> Bro, where's your shirt? You need new clothes this summer. Bridge Street Exchange in Fenton. That's where you need to go. Thank you, guys. Uh, Art, if uh, it makes you feel any better, you've got the Grammy <laughs> Whammy endorsement. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, uh, the Grammy Whammy yeah. endorsement means something. That She's means taking. Now, here's the thing. This is like, this sounds like it's happening. Okay, like <laughs> I, I'm like at first I was kind of like, ah, oh, that'd be funny, but but it's like these guys are talking during the break and everything. And Art even seriously said he goes, "Give me six weeks." Well, and plus, I need show money and I need win money. We, we can do that. All that. That, that, that Let's is do the worry. The worry is going to be if you, man, you know you talking to him here. I got to be paid. You know who you're talking to? <laughs> this is a winner. Hey, hey, this a winner, this is a winner take all Sean, thing. This ain't a split pot type thing, Sean, right? Sean. Did you hear what he just said? What did no, he say to you? It? No, no. Well, he, he said, I need win money. Do you know who you're talking to here? I want show money and win money. Chad, tell them, t tell them what you brought in last year. Man, I ain't worried about any of that. All I'm saying, the winner gets paid. The loser gets giggled at. When it, the How's that? Hey, we got a special guest on the air. I don't know when we interrupt the show like that, but yeah. I'm going to. We got a special guest on the air. You guys can guess who it is. Who He's is? on the air right now. Start talking, sir. Hey, what's happening, guys? I hear Art thinks he can beat me up. Whoa! It's Chuff! It's Chuff! <laughs> hey, Chuff! Oh. <laughs> Chuff, what's... Hey, real quick, Chuff. If we put you in a boxing ring with Art, three rounds... Is it going to go the whole three rounds? To be honest, it's going to depend on a lot of things. And, and one of those things to really be Art's anger levels that day. I mean, I, you know, you guys know Art pretty well. He's got to be one of the most. Oh, oh good job, Fish. <laughs> you just did, you just did something on there. Hey, get some he service. Say his name. He's free. So to be honest, I think I want to punch Chop now. Yeah, I, want to punch Chop. I don't even Chop. need Art any longer Chop. to Chop. punch Chop. Chop. I am going to punch Chop straight in the chops Listen, now. Listen, I don't want to talk to somebody. I'm not fighting anybody who's got a Metro PCS yeah, phone. Let's keep it moving. Off. What's wrong with Metro? Get a new guy. Get, get a new guy. You guys, this is, see, this is crazy to me because I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Chop that picture. That you can put that picture of Chop yeah, yeah, up again. Yeah, give him his picture. Yeah, I want to fight <laughs> Doug from Nickelodeon. Damn. <laughs> Let's fight Doug from Nickelodeon. Get him off the my nicest show. guy. Art, those tattoos ain't gonna carry you in that ring, yeah, bro. No, no, those tattoos right ain't will. gonna 
take care of you in that Shop ring. Shop is the right nicest. Well. Like, I'm telling you. Look at how Timmy's walking in here. Oh, no. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. No more empty bag. Oh, I don't want to hear about empty bags How you anymore. feeling today, Timmy? <laughs> listen, I'll put an end to this, okay? If Shaf wants to fight, I'll gladly fight him. Um, we're kind of, I want to make sure that we're on the same weight. We've got it. Like, I want this serious. I don't same, want this. Same weight. Know, yeah. Like, Do you I, see him? I want him to meet me at 165. He Actually, can't you know get what? There. 160. I want to meet at 160. Well, hold on. Where's he at? He, probably a buck 10. I don't know. He's built like a 14 year old girl. Let's set this shit up. Let's this, go. See, this is what, this is what this I'm thing. telling you. This book, I did not know that Choff had this background. He is the nicest guy here. And I mean, no disrespect to anybody. He's just a nice guy. This is an unsanctioned winner take all oh, type of battle. I like this. I will say we're going this. Live. Chop, we're chop. going live. Six <laughs> weeks. We're going live <laughs> after my charity weekend, June 17th to June, June 17th to June 20th. My charity weekend. We're gonna go live here on June 21st. We got Chop versus Art. Let's go! Hey, you're gonna have to work Angry on them art. We're gonna work on them biceps. Hey, we got it. We think we got his connection back. All right. We'll give him one more chance. Ladies we'll and gentlemen, more chance. the nicest guy around here, Chaff. What's up, Chaff? Art on the one day a year that he gets laid, so he's in a good mood, and I actually have a chance. Oh. Okay, that, was, that was good. That, that was, was good. good. He's got a good. lot of kids, so I think he gets it a little bit more than once in a while. You'd be surprised, Chad. <laughs> 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 no, listen. In all honesty, I've got no, I've got no bad blood against the guy. It's just I've got a name to, to uphold. No, 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 I got a name that no one else. Hey yo, Chuck name is not Chad Johnson. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. All right, Chuck, listen. You can get it anytime, any date. Give me six weeks though. Chuck. <laughs> anytime, any Chuff, date. Man. Give me How much six weeks. Payday, Chuff. Chuff. It's a big payday, Chuck. Put hey. in the work. There's not a skate park. There's not a skate park, Chuck. Chuff. Ask him how much you. How, how much, much you weigh, weigh Chuff? Uh. Soaking wet, 131 pounds. That's perfect. We need Art to drop 15 pounds in six weeks. And you got to gain. You got to gain about 15. Yeah, let's do that. Let's All right, we're in. Let's meet at 150. I'm start 155. That's not. That's Chuff, not. what's your background? I, I, I mean, I mean, no disrespect. I'm sorry if they don't know. He's what, a skater. What, what's your, what's your background? Like it, it, boxing? You know, have you trained? What, what's your background? He, he, he I've been dealing with bullies at the skate park since I was a, an infant, so that's been <laughs> super fun. Um, yeah, other than that, I, I haven't really fought since middle school, to be honest. So, you know, we're in for a treat here. You might see me uh, get squashed like a watermelon. Okay, let's make it clear, though, when we do do this fight, it's not boxing, it's MMA. I'm not doing boxing. I want a full MMA chopper. You do, hey, look, Are no. you down? I do Art is to... scared to get punched straight in the nose. No, I'm just Clearly. prepared. I got my wheelhouse. I wrestled. So, Chop, are you down? Is that cool with you? I don't want. I'm sure, all jokes aside, I don't want to put right. either of you in a position you don't want to be in. But He's gonna try cool to tackle you, you Chop. Will you punch him in his face when he tries to tackle you? Is the question. I'll do anything at least once. You know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about anal. <laughs> you know what's crazy? There's always. I'm gonna tell you though. There's always the guys that's always happy, always smiling that has that mean streak in the back because they always hide. I think he's wearing a mask. That's a, that smile he wears. That's For a real? mask. Yeah, he's got anger underneath that mask. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen Chop in the mean room? I, no, listen to me. I, I'm, I'm going to say this again. The man is constantly smiling. Constantly has like a kind word. Like I, I, I love him for that. I'm serious. That's why I'm trying to think of him getting in the ring all pissed off, and I, can't, I can't visualize it. I've seen him react when I look at him and say, "Really, a couple hours of work today, Chaff." I mean, he gets that anger in his eyes like I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple hours. <laughs> I've it's seen great, baby, because I work hard. <laughs> <laughs> Who was in the meeting room? Who was in the meeting room? And he held his ground. He he held it down. He did. He, he did. did. That's what I was knew. In the that he Me, could Chad, take out Jesse, heart. and Chaff was in the meeting room. I was like, okay, Chaff. He knows his stuff. Listen, I'm gonna. This is a Chaff ass kissing contest. I get my shit reamed in every single day here, and I still show up. So listen, we're either doing it in six weeks or not. Are you in, Chaff? Yes or no? I need an answer. 
I heard a clear yes. I heard a clear yes. I heard an absolute clear yes. Chad, find me a babysitter for seven kids. Let's go. No. In the last six weeks, it's going to be... Contracts be being made up. I got, uh, I got the people Listen. in the back writing up the contract. You guys just put your we, name we to got, it. We got Choff now. All right, Choff, go ahead. Anything to make Art feel a little bit better about his miserable life. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Ooh. Talk that talk, man. All right. Talk that talk, Choff. Timmy and No Bag will be uh, one of the ring girls. We'll have him walk around with No Bag. Hey. Hey, listen, but listen, Chuff. And now if you lose, for if you lose for for like a whole month, your name's gonna go from Chuff to 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 Cher. All right. <laughs> How could you call me what you want, guy? Look at him. He's the he's nicest. Such a good he's dude. such, such a, a good nice. Dude. Look at that picture. We have him. That looks like the a, nicest dude. Bro, that Art looks like a guy. Hey, off hey, his Art, face. put it back on him real quick. Art wants to punch that smile right off his face. That's the guy like he's ready to press charges. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chop. Appreciate you. We'll see you soon, Chop. All right, see you in court. Yeah, thank you guys. See ya. <laughs> what a so shit show good. this is going to be. Oh my so God. Good. So Only good. Woodward Sports. We are oh. going to put on the biggest <laughs> shit show for you in the history of mankind. For Trust sure. us when we say that. <laughs> no, no lie. No Wait lie. till you see the trunks we make them both wear. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, <laughs> Easy's on here talking about his belt and who he's going to bet yeah. on and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, guys. Uh, when we come back from break, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, what's going on. We, I don't know why they put Bridezilla in here, but I guess we got to talk about Bridezilla. Um, so stay tuned. Drake Bell, Chad Johnson, Sean Belizean. Stay tuned. You don't fumble the ball at work. Hey, Drake Bell, Sean Belizean. See you guys next weekend. Bell soft wait till I come to New Zealand. Before. All right, welcome All right. back in. Glad you could join us as Woodward Sports on a Friday. We got Joyke Bell, Chad Johnson in the house as well. And I guess we have fight night at Woodward Sports mm. too. We're gonna figure out the date, but we're gonna we're gonna put together some kind of card. Oh, I, yeah. I know Easy could beat everybody, just ask him. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna put together some kind of a card, all hey, right? Here's a there's a comment that just came in. Uh D Mac versus Joyke for the main event. I'll def I'll co-headline that any day. Right, listen, I'm gonna get this out. I ain't fighting they anybody. They told me I gotta go with big, big money to put on that fight. Yeah. So uh, I don't know about that one happening. That not, might have to be pay per view. I'm not, not pay per view. I'm not fighting that. anybody. The only maybe Timmy's empty bag. That's it. That that might be the <laughs> speed bag. <laughs> I can do that. There's nothing in the bag. Yeah. It'd be like Popeye. I need my spinach. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, get, you gotta quick, get your knees to do that. We're getting some comments then. Uh, undercard stick versus Adam. And uh, Chad versus Joey. Listen to me. I'm not taking on Adam uh, for nothing. I want to see that Chad I, listen, versus Joey. I, I I'm not taking Chad, on Adam for nothing. I want to see Chad versus Joey. That would be whoo. That would be good. <laughs> that would be, be good. <laughs> Chad Adam's <laughs> anger. Like, I can you imagine? Adam would do something bad to somebody in, in, in the ring. This he is would, the best one right here. It's up on the screen. I want you to read it. Go ahead, uh, Sean. Sean versus own hamstring. My hamstring. <laughs> I listen. I, I'm telling you right now. Inside information. I, I bet a lot of money on my hamstring. Bet a, bet a lot of money on yeah. my hamstring. Yeah. yeah, my hamstring's gonna take me out. There's no doubt about that. Hey, hey uh, real quick. All right, hey, give us a rundown on the Bridezilla. What's yeah. Going so, on here? Uh, so I saw this post on Reddit, and I'm gonna put it up on the board right now. Uh, the bride canceled her wedding because her guest didn't donate a $1,500 check to each funding the event. So this is the post from the Bridezilla. Said, I'm exhausted, I'm bone tired, my heart is not the same, it's stone cold, fragmented, empty. I need to get away from this awful society. How hard would it be to have fucking donated, friends? Do I matter to you? Just fucking give me the money for my wedding. I won't even sugarcoat it. I won't even pretend that's not what I wanted. It was for a dream. I was stabbed, cheated on, uh, and worked. So there's the comments on the Facebook post from her friends that say, I have no words, you're out of your mind, Susan. And then what happened to you? Who on the hell expects that amount of money? Here's the question for the, for the three of you right now. Does she have a point to basically have her friends pay for the wedding? No. no. It's the most no. ridiculous thing you've ever listened thing I, to. I know. That's almost the craziest thing I've ever heard. You know the craziest thing I've ever heard? This couple 
this couple plan a wedding at a mansion that they thought was vacant. And as soon as the guests started to arrive, the police were called. They had to cancel the wedding. At a vacant mansion they thought nobody lived in, but people were living there, and the police was called when the guests started to arrive. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. But this right here. I love what Imagine friend, that just saying, I'm going to go with this plan. I'm going to go with just this reminded, vacant mansion. I'm going to book the wedding there, and we're just going to go in there. Imagine you be like, let's do it. I'm going with it. I, I <laughs> love going back to what you just posted. I love what her first friend said. That's the best friend she'll ever have in her life. Yeah. I have no words. You're out of your mind. That, <laughs> like, sometimes you, like, oh. we've all been in that position before where sometimes hey, you have to tell your friend. That's how to put it back on that letter. Wrong put it back you. on that letter real quick. That letter can only be written by somebody named Susan. What happened to you? It says, "Who the hell expects that amount, amount of money?" money. <laughs> now, where's your father? Where's your dad? <laughs> what happened to where's you? Where's your husband? What the? Mm. That is because absolute... usually isn't the father supposed to pay for the wedding of uh, uh, the bride? Yeah. That's, yeah. Yes. That's traditional. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you either so you better you better keep saving. Oh. Uh. Because baby girl is going to have a big time wedding. Oh, Here's yeah. my question. Come here, Kukla. Aww. Come here, Kukla. By the way, Tammy said, for what it's worth, uh, Tammy sent this uh, breaking news from the wings. Dylan Larkin will miss the rest of the season with an upper body injury. You know what? If it improves the draft choice, I'm, I'm all for it, even though there's the lottery. I'm going to say it again. Uh, we talked about it last week. The deal was awesome. It wasn't just for the picks. Jacob Vrana is a hell of a hockey player. He showed it last night with four goals. Mm. It's going to take time, guys. It's going to take time. That, that's the way it is. All right. who do, do we have a special guest here? We do have a special guest. Oh, what a doll. A special little guest. Oh, wow, she's here running to her daddy. She, she looks scared. She's yeah. absolutely she's scared. adorable. She's scared of you, Chad. <laughs> you want to see daddy or what? <laughs> come in. Come. Aww. Aww. Hi, sweetie. Baby. There you go. Get she's her. kind of looking at all of us right now like, do I have to go in there? Go get her, daddy. There you go. Get her. I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame her. What kind of snacks does she have, Joy? Chips. Okay. You know what? My daughter was all about, as she called them, she could not say the word, Chad, goldfish crackers. So she called them Goshikas. Goshikas. That's what she... So to this day, like, I'll say to my daughter, I'll go to the grocery store, I'll go, honey, do you need anything? And she'll go, Dad, can you pick me up some Goshikas? She's yeah. 16 years old. We all call goldfish crackers or Goshikas. That to this day. Look at that angel. Welcome, baby. What hey. a beautiful well, say angel. Say hi, everybody. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Say hi. Are you going to smile? Who's that, that? Who's that pretty, so pretty girl on the TV today. screen? Who's that pretty girl on the TV? What a pretty girl. Look at you. You're beautiful. <laughs> say thank you. Aww. Say Evgadi store. Say Evgadi store. Say thank you and greet. Oh. Say Evgadi mm -hmm. store. I oh, I see, Sean. What okay. a beautiful okay, bowl you have on, sweetheart. Eat some chips. Eat some chips. You got some content to give us or we got to kick you off stage. <laughs> say something. <laughs> Do something, say something, or get the hell out of here. <laughs> she, she said, my daddy right here. <laughs> I All mean, right. you're killing us right you're now. Killing you're us killing right us. Now. <laughs> you like me so cute. Go Looks ahead. can only go she's, so she's far. Gonna get killing a, us. She's going to get in a group text message, and her mind's going to be blown in about five minutes. <laughs> what did I get myself into? You're the best, <laughs> baby. You're, you're the oh, best. Oh, you are so sweet. Oh, my God. You are. <laughs> you Joy, how old is she? It. How old is she? She's three. Oh, she's, she's three. adorable. <laughs> I yeah. love your bow. Oh, see, you know what, though? That's so pretty. Oh, oh, look at those nails. nails. Well, you wanna, do you want to show it to the camera? You, you want to show everybody on TV? You want to show everybody? Come those on. are the prettiest okay, nails. Okay. okay. Oh, my oh, goodness she's gracious. She's so shy. Oh, that oh. is, that is, uh, you know what's funny though? Joy. You know, so whenever, <laughs> like, um, she's on FaceTime, my son comes on the camera. Like she runs from the from like it's like a thing they have. I don't know what it is. Oh, I can tell. She runs from the FaceTime, uh, and then and then when they're together, she doesn't want to leave them. So it's 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 like it's I guess it's their thing. I don't know, but okay. Um, but yeah, Brazil. No, I'm not paying for that. I'm, I'm not, no. Do you think was, it's 
do you think it's unacceptable? Because for me, I think even and having... then even and then even if that was the case, I'm not going to social media and putting it on there and saying my. I can respect the guts though. <laughs> I can respect having the guts to do it. I mean, you look like a total buffoon. No. But, but even I mean, having... you hit send, you got made. You're drunk, or you got made your guts. But here's the thing: <laughs> even asking people to get on a plane and go to a vacation wedding together is a hassle. Asking for fifteen hundred dollars. That's actually like... cheaper though. That's actually cheaper. Yeah, but still, like even if you're paying for the flight, you're having me waste. Uh, not waste, but I gotta take a couple days yes, off. Get a no, stop it. It's a you waste. Are it's a waste. waste. No, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. I, we got invited to um, Golden Tate and his wife's wedding, and they had it in Cabo, and it was for a week. It was for a week, and they had activities every day golf, up, golf, golf, up until the wedding, up until the wedding. And when I tell you, I was so mad I couldn't go because at that time Zika uh, was going around, and. Um, my daughter was cooking in the oven, so I couldn't go. I had to make sure she was good, so we couldn't go. But I had booked my room almost like a year, like almost like a year in advance, and I was excited to go. And then that happened, I couldn't go. I would definitely have been there. I would have spent that money. That's a good. That's a good vacation for me. I'll spend my money on a vacation. Yeah. Before I go out here and buy jewelry, buy a car. I would spend it on a vacation. I think my mental is way more important than. A piece of jewelry. So I, I, you know, I mean, you talked about this. Yes. About it's not even about the money. It's about, it's about the mental. Right? Yep. You know, Absolutely. That's what it's about. Yep. So. Uh, by the way, uh, Jenna pointed out that all three of us turned into a bunch of softies when your beautiful daughter came up here. I'm uh, going to tell you point pansy. blank, and I, I know I can speak for full, both of these guys. We're all girl dads, right? Me personally, my life changed forever when my daughter was born. Period. End of story. Mm -hmm. And Joyke, you and I have talked about my son is my boy. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. My daughter becoming the father to a daughter. My my hot head went like this. My my idiocy went like that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what I can't I was a different human being yeah. once I became a girl dad. Mm -hmm. I have no other way to say that. It's funny. So we so we're skiing with my son and I noticed like after a while he was going so slow. I just I just go in front of him. And when I, you know, get to the bottom of the slope, I turn around and I look. Oh, okay, he's good. I wouldn't do that with my daughter. No, no. <laughs> I'm not doing that with her. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Uh-uh. No, it's, I'm not it's, doing it's that. It's a different, it's a, I don't, I don't know how to, she's my little princess. She's mm. 16 years old. She's still my little princess. Yeah. I make her give me a kiss on the cheek every day. Yeah, it it about changes about. your life. Yeah, no, it's the same with my daughter, Nanny. You know, it grows up quick. You have them, and next day, you know, they're a senior in high school. So my baby's graduating this year, and uh, she'll be attending the University of Miami. So I'm proud of her. First generation to go to college. Shit, I barely got through high school. So uh, uh, raising these babies and being passionate, but having a, a daughter, because I went girl, boy, boy. Um, yeah, she's everything to me. My life changed my life and ultimately gave me the grind to try to uh, accomplish greatness for my family and the people around me and uh she definitely grounded me and uh, uh an amazing woman and um yeah i hope you all get to meet her someday yeah it will it will well, so, I know you all so, have. I'm so i'm very that that. but you know what though i heard your daughter she gave a speech at um at a school and she kind of talked about you and when you hear your daughter talk about you it's that way tech talk yeah yeah when you hear your daughter talk about you like that how did that make you feel she talked about how you came from nothing and how you have to work and grind and make it to the top, and she admired that, and that makes you feel good as a father. Makes Putting me feel good that. because of the compassion and what she knows her dad went through, mm -hmm. but what people around her are going through, right? That's usually when, once you happen, once you become, I guess, a privileged kid, you know, you don't keep what's going on around you, the other kids, their feelings, what they're dealing with at home, and I think me just slamming that in her face every day, uh, being born in a trailer park, seeing my mom use food stamps, um, you know, she's always gotten that straight to her face even though she has a great life so when she sees the kids around her and when she did that ted talk yeah i mean humbled crying like a little baby to be honest mm -hmm. with you when your daughter um is talking so highly of you as a dad so yeah. Um, it's been something that's very important to me because most people ask, you know, about the businesses and the life and, yeah. you know, this and cars and money. And really the most important thing was, you know, how did I yeah. raise and was I a good dad to my children? Did I set yeah. them up to be, Amen. you know, yeah. great? And that uh, yeah. I feel very successful in that. So that's what makes me happy. Yeah. Speaking of good parents, uh, when we come back from break, I want to talk about um, this man who took his father's ashes and stuff them in a bowling ball and went bowling with it and bowled a perfect game when we come back. Mm -hmm. 
I'm looking to bring on another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months, and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. What a fun show on a Friday. Seriously, yeah. appreciate Chad sitting in. And earlier we had Charlie LaDuff. They gave me Drew the energy Langan. to do it. You know, oh, I see yeah. them coming in here and they're just bang, bang, bang. Hey. I'm like, no, bullshit. Let me in there. Let me in there. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what the energy comes from? The energy comes from me and Sean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. you, come, you come into our realm, you're going to get some of this energy. We're going to give it off. You're going to take it. You're going you're gonna to accept it. And then, you know, you're going to put it out there to the people. Yeah. Look at that. Joke, Joke was talking about something before we went to break. Yeah. And, and it, many of you know. I just went through this, and my dad wanted to be cremate, cremated, so we have his ashes. So when we heard this story, I was like, you did what with the ashes? Yeah. Check this out. 300 is perfection in bowling, but for John Hinkle, some 300 games are better than others, especially when they include your late father. Peoria's John Hinkle is a two-time NCAA bowling champion. He's rolled so many 300 games, he's lost count but none were like the one last week. I had tears in my eyes for the 11th and 12th frame. I couldn't even tell you where that last ball went. I had so many tears in my eyes just throwing it. I just was hoping that it would strike and it did. He bowled his 300 on his regular league night, but it was the first time he used a unique ball. Hinkle bowls two-handed, and to do that legally, you can't have three holes in your bowling ball. So he filled the thumb hole of his ball with his father's ashes. So right here is where the thumb hole used to be. So that's where the ashes are at. His father introduced bowling to John and his brother Joe, and they've bowled on the same team for years. I was talking to my brother earlier in the night. I go, I'm shooting a 300 tonight with this ball. He goes, do it. This makes up for so many nights growing up that we slept in the bowling alley while our parents were finishing league night. <laughs> Both John and Joe say this is an incredible achievement for their bowling family, and they both firmly believe their father John was present for this last Monday night. Dad always shot 298, 299, never had a 300. I had goosebumps, chills. I, it was, he was there. This was the best one. This is by far the best, and I, it was definitely the hardest one because, I mean, I was shaking. I feel like I have to go all David Muir on you and say America Strong or something like that. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you watch a story like that. Listen, I'm not going to tell mm. a dude how to feel. Yeah. I, and and if that if that is honoring your father and that's wonderful, I think it's morbid as sin. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Yeah. You know what's it, funny? It's what? Huh? No. Listen. I, listen. I, I'm going to tell you this. When I read that on the script last night, I said that is that's creepy, bro. That's creepy. And then when I watched the video of it, it wasn't as creepy as I thought yeah, it was. Yeah, I feel differently hey, than you yeah, do. Yeah, no, no, listen. And But watching that video, it made me feel like, no, that was a special moment between him and his father. If his father introduced him to it, and I was thinking, like, if something happened to me, would my kids put me in a football and take me to a football field with my ashes? I would, Drake. Like, I'd do that for you, buddy. No, I don't want to get cremated. But um, <laughs> you already look cremated. So, <laughs> no, but... I thought it was pretty His cool. His color's starting to come yeah. back. <laughs> Timmy's bag. Everything yeah. comes back to Timmy's yeah. bag. That yeah. got cremated. He's turning red. Everyone pray for Timmy this week, <laughs> <laughs> please. Everybody pray for Timmy. And all. If so you guys what, could, maybe we could hashtag Timmy's bag. If there's any, talk, if there's any talkers so we, out there that could give him any advice, we'll take kind any of controversy. advice also. So this is the kind of controversy. Is, is that like birth control now? <laughs> are the new? Are the new? Are the we need a side? T-shirt with a with a bag, and it says hashtag Timmy's hashtag bag. Timmy's yeah. bag. Yeah. Hashtag I, Timmy's yeah, bag. We, maybe we can get it trended, and it just everybody come up. We'll we'll see, so, we don't have those shirts by tomorrow. So the sticks on there already. Appreciate the stick. <laughs> the best part is he has no clue. <laughs> Timmy said. Oh, that's outstanding. Chad, great being here, man. man What's, what yeah. else is going Thanks on with you? Any, anything guys. you want to pimp, man? I fly home today, hang out with uh, the family. Obviously, my daughter's graduating here in less than a month. Uh, uh, go spend some time with the family. Um, what do I got coming? I got my boy John Abrams from uh, the Raiders coming, coming in, in this weekend. And uh, um, a couple other guys. Uh, 
Uh, Keyshawn Nixon, we're going to go out on the boat on Saturday, do some family stuff on Sunday. That's about it, bud. Good just, for you, just, man. Just relax and hang out. Real quick, we found a picture of Timmy's bag. So, <laughs> RIP to Timmy's bag. RIP. There you go. Load that thing up with some water. <laughs> oh, hang so on. Is that, hold on. So, is that bag we're going to what? We'll put some air in it. And no, use we it. got a close up. Here's a close up. There we go. All right. So, is that what you're going to use for your speed bag? Yep. <laughs> Be punching all up on Timmy's back. Yeah. I think you we know, can wrap you know, this show you know, now. You, you, you know you got to get on your knees for that. Right? Uh, no, you got to pay me double. Let's wrap up the show. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, what, 50 have cents? yourselves a great weekend. Perish for God Timmy's bless you. back. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Shabbily, gang, gang. <laughs>